Okay, so let's give this another try, shall we? Um, I do not know if this is going to work. Um, but we'll have a look and we'll see if it works. Um, so how do I find out if this is actually working or not? Um, I'm not at all sure this, which I'm trying to do, is a good idea. Um, which is, if I say get shareable link... Uh, and then I open that, <clears throat> look at my own stream on my own machine, is likely to cause problems. But let's find out. I don't know how far behind it is, but um, we flick these back and forth. Okay, it's by no means perfect, but stuff does seem to be moving in that str in the stream so that's encouraging right let me so i'm trying to find the bit in the stream where i scrolled up and down um i did okay that seems to be working right so we'll go with that then so um okay let's go and edit the old stream uh so, hang on, I'm going to put you back in waiting mode. Ha! Huh, now I've got to find my previous post and follow it up. And you should be able to see uh, my my desktop. Um, if anyone is able to see this or whatever, do drop something in the chat for a laugh. And hopefully, <laughs> um, we'll see if this works. I, I know guarantees that it will. And uh, if there's anything like the previous stream, Popey said that it was a slideshow with about one frame a minute. Hopefully this is better based on what I very briefly looked at. But... Who knows? So, resuming where we left off, if any of you are uh, out there looking at this, um, I have a piece of software called Pick, and I have a bunch of people who have asked me to make a flat pack of it. It is currently distributed as a Snap or via its GitHub repo. And a lot of people said, um, please could you make a flat pack? Now, it is disappointing to me that as far as I can tell, half the people who want a flat pack of it don't seem to be doing so because they like flat packs. It's just like an anti-snap measure. It's, honestly, anytime someone says, you should make a flat pack, snaps are rubbish, what it makes me do is go, well, I'm not doing that for another month. So you may not want to do that. But some, a bunch of other people said, hey, can you make if we, if, we, if we go and have a look? Uh, a bunch of people said, hey, could you make a flat pack of this? They didn't appear to be doing so just as some kind of big anti-snap measure. Um... Flatpak is not available on Ubuntu, um, according to Mark Shuttleworth. It's not going to be, which is pretty disappointing, considering that's where literally all the users are, but whatever. So, impossible to offer a deb file, um, and it's in here, and so... like You see, look, it's a great alternative... No, I don't... Uh, stop pushing it as an alternative. Just go, I'd like Flatpak because it would be useful to me. Do consider Flatpak. Three thumbs up. Plus one Flatpak. Four thumbs up. Cool. Okay. Thanks, Dakdel. Thanks, Skoda12. Um, using this, using your pitch for Flatpak to complain about snaps is just going to convince me not to do it. Anyway, um, so I have installed Flatpak itself. And just looking into this, I know nothing about Flatpak, right? Um, 
So on Bad Voltage, uh, which is a podcast I do with um, John Bacon, Jeremy Garcia, we had uh, George Castro on as a guest ooh, a couple of months ago, a, month, a couple of weeks ago, whenever it was, and he's wholly, wholly engaged with Flatback. So uh, he was talking about Flatback and Flat Hub and so on, and so cool combination of these things of Popey building on snap kind of encouraged me to have a look at this stuff so looking into it so far i have discovered that there are run times um which are things which are essentially dependencies uh, the gnome uh platform runtime comes in different versions um and so the current versions are 41 and 42 uh, i tried installing a thing called dungeon sheet or something which is a D and D five E character sheet maker, which hasn't been touched for a year, and it's dependent on uh, platform runtime version forty. And what this whines about is that um, you shouldn't be installing that because GNOME forty, the GNOME forty runtime is no longer supported. It looks like runtimes last about a year since the GNOME forty runtime appeared to have been released about a year ago in twenty twenty one. So I have a bunch of questions about that, like. If I build my application now against Runtime 42, which appears to be the current version, am I going to have to rebuild it in a year just because 42 is EOL? It, um, from, the, from a pitch from some people on Reddit, it seems that the answer is no. Um, it will keep working. What I don't know is uh, if there's a security issue in an, in an end-of-life runtime, does this screw all my apps? I don't know the answer to that. Need to find out. So I'm building a list of notes. But that's all fine. So I would like to install some kind of flat pack application just to experiment with the idea of flat pack. Um, I would like to pick something which depends on a which doesn't depend on an end of life runtime, of course. And because this is my first flat pack, this is quite an auspicious moment. So I should pick something cool. But I don't want to pick anything too big. <laughs> so. Uh, let's find just something that seems vaguely interesting to me, which I can try installing. And uh, what might that be? Uh, powerful Markdown. Oh, Markdown editor. Okay. Um, when was this last touch? Oh, last update on April the first. Well, it's slightly worrying, but whatever. How is it version twenty twenty oh four oh four when it was last? Oh, okay. Whatever, maybe you just have to rebuild it. Um, so, uh, this seems fair. Um, I'm Because I've installed Flatback and I haven't rebooted, I'm assuming that this install doesn't work. Oh, I said I was going to post this link, didn't I? Um, was this the link? Yes, it was. Um, I said I was going to post this link on the old um, live stream. So, uh, I wonder how I do that. <laughs> um... Uh, let's let's see about that, and I'll post it as a comment, or I'll edit the the thing or something, just so anyone following the old link can stream to the new one. Uh, right, okay, so this here was it. I can see it in my channel dashboard. How do I get at it? <laughs> I would like to please edit this video. Uh... YouTube, live settings, analytics, details, so channel content, does that take me back to it? So if I go into live now, right, okay, so there is that, so if I go view on, oh no, I don't want view on YouTube actually, do I? I don't want to actually look at it, what I want to do is I want to edit its description, so... I'll put, oops, stream less broken, hopefully at Bosch. Okay, save. Right, so that gives people a link to the to the new one. Um, right, this one. So, okay, so, uh, where was I? Oh, yes, um, so marker, this seems fine. Um, I probably can't click on install here because I have installed Flatback and not rebooted, which means it won't have done all the setup. The reason I haven't rebooted is because... I'm in the middle of a stream. <laughs> so, uh, I should be able to just run this, and let's see, this should be up to date now. Oh, hang on, why am I off the side? Oh, note that the directories there are not in the search bar. Yes, yeah, this is because I haven't done the restart. 
Uh, this requires runtime 41, so it's not being rebuilt 42, but I'm sure that's fine. Do I want to install it? Yes, yes, I do. Um, so this is going to install, these are all presumably dependencies. Um, crikey. Org.gnome.platform.local is 336 megs. Uh, oh, only 1.6 gigs left. That should be enough, hopefully. We'll find out. Org.gnome.platform is... Man, this is tight. Crikey. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to... Uh, excuse me while over on my other screen, I'll do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, where I uh, empty the rubbish bin, for example. Um, because I am running perilously low on disk space. Yes, I am. Um, how much disk space have I got left now? Properties. 8.6 gigs. So I had... That's better, right, yeah, check here now, right, yeah, yeah, you see, so I had like five gigs in the, in the, in the rubbish bin. But well, proceed with these changes, so this is going to install the local files for it, so presumably, so translations are a different flat pack, aren't they? That's interesting. Um, I wonder if that's just mine, so the English text, or whether it's all of them, and if it's all of them, why is it in a different thing? Anyway, whatever. GL, Vappy, fine, these are... Open H264. I mean, I can't think why a markdown editor needs stuff to do with um, uh, video and uh, graphics card things, but whatever. Don't care. Gee, that's 131 megs. Crikey. Um, all look at the platform at a locale. Fine. Uh, Yaru Dark. Huh, that's interesting. Now, one of the things with Snaps has been that. They're not necessarily great at picking up your theme, and that appears to be because um, people building, uh, I don't know what we might call them, um, new style software distribution methods appear to have, uh, appear to, oh, hey, Bella's in the chat. Hello, pal. Um, <laughs> um, let me know if this is um, coming through okay, will you? Because uh, I've got no idea what I'm doing here. So I'm, Also, I've got no idea how long ago you wrote that or when it'll be until you hear this. Um, when I was testing on this, uh, it seems like I say a thing and then a minute later or something it makes it to YouTube. So this could be a while. But uh, if this if this stream looks like um, it's once it's one frame every two minutes or something, do let me know. Anyway, so what I was saying was uh, one of the issues with snaps was that they don't tend to obey your system theme all that well. Um, and some of this is because they need to do better platform integration. And some of it is because theming appears to be some kind of immensely complicated thing where every theme is actually linked into stuff which would exist outside the snap and so on. And the upshot of this is people said, I want an application I run to respect my desktop theme like they always have done. And I don't care what method I use to download it. And then you've got a bunch of uh, double talk from the Snaps team about, oh, that's totally hard and we can't do it. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a snap of every theme in existence, except for maybe the one you've got. Um, and, I mean, maybe it's okay because I'm using a stock Ubuntu theme. Um, and therefore, I would certainly expect it to work. Uh, I am... I will be extremely disappointed if this goes, well, I, we're a GNOME thing and the GNOME people say you have to use AdWaiter and therefore this flatback arrives as AdWaiter. But whatever if that happens that just means that i probably won't use a lot of flat packs but there's not there's nothing stopping you building a flat pack of pick for other people to use which is actually the purpose of this also i've just cleaned my glasses and it didn't help at all um ah bill says all good this end audio and video are good excellent thank you pal i appreciate that so uh this in this appears to install yarrow dark as a theme i don't actually know if i'm i don't think i'm running yarrow am i or am i because i'm running 2004 ubuntu i'm not running 2204 because i run the lts and the LTS update is not offered until uh, 2204.1 comes out, which will probably be in July or something. Um, so I'm still on 2004, which is two years old at this point. The, it's the currently supported LTS version of Ubuntu. So presumably, this is what I'm running. Don't know. All.gnome.platform, and then this is the actual application itself. 28.4 megs, fine, whatever. Um, okay, yes, I'd like to proceed. Damn right, I wish to proceed. So... This installs, it knows about ANSI codes. Look at that. None of this print out loads of different lines. We can page back up because we have an addressable terminal. Yes, we do. So, 
let's see what happens here that looks okay um i mean downloading should be relatively quick because i have a stupidly fast internet connection this ah, this be interesting um this has got nothing to do with what we're doing but just for lols while i'm streaming let's see what this actually comes up with <laughs> i'm assuming the answer is not going to be fast because i'm trying to I'm, I'm doing a stream at the moment and downloading a bunch of stuff from flat hub and looking at fast.com so this is good oh, 160 kilobits <laughs> okay uh, normally it's about uh, 5000 times as much as that so looking this stuff up while you're on a stream may not be the way forwards but we should find out yeah okay so we're not going to do that then <laughs> i don't know it was 980 megabits per second at one point um so yeah don't test fast.com while you're doing a stream okay so this is all installing nice that seemed to be okay seemed to install without a problem now what happens next so this is installing 100 percent uh if it's 100 percent, why isn't it done then <laughs> um excuse me for a, a tiny rant about progress bars but you don't print 100 percent until you're finished uh, okay, so, and I run it with that, so let's try running it. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to set up my flatback as org.cryogenics.pic, uh, but we shall see. Okay, it's Markdown Editor. Um, so I type in, well, that's not very readable, is it? That's a one there. This. Oh, well, that's useful. Okay. <laughs> so... I'm sure uh, that a whole bunch of people are going to blame this on the Yaru theme, and the Yaru people are going to blame it on GNOME and uh, or on the writer of this application. But this is not an encouraging start. Um, theming still not great. Uh, so what's this program called? Um, it just says untitled.md. Can I find out what it's called from here? I think it's called Marker. Uh, marker white text on highlighted white background while typing if I put if I do a new line yeah okay well that's not very helpful uh, this is a test uh, this this is a heading okay so it does headings um, this is italic. No, it's un uh, oh, it's underlined. Okay. No, oh, double under. So single underscore is. <laughs> is it stars? Yep. Oh, italic. Okay, so double anything is bold. Star is italic and underscore is underscore uh, is underlined. Okay. Weird, but whatever. So that seems to work. If I save it, what does it actually save it as? Okay. Uh, so that was interesting. That looked like it just had access to my home directory. Isn't there supposed to be some kind of sandbox thing? Although maybe this application can't read it, but the the pop-up box can, because the pop-up box belongs to the operating system. Um, <laughs> Bill in the chat says, oh, isn't your download speed nice and fast? Which he knows it is, because he crawled around on his hands and knees in my house, wiring up the, um, the Cat5 so that it is. Apart from the fact that that's not actually being exhibited at the moment. Sorry, pal, I apologise. <laughs> So this is the menu thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I can go full screen. Oh, it's got a sidebar. What does the side... Oh, right, okay. What does view mode do? It's only preview, only dual page. Okay, right, fine. Well, that makes sense. There is help. Oh, well done. People, a lot of people don't provide help these days, and they should do. Um, pro tip for you. And this is a thing I picked up from the people who make... From the chap, Evan... Harris, I think it's not something like that, who makes Wizard, which is a very detailed stats application for the Mac. Um, that in your help menu, put email the developer. B 
because then if you if you were able to do that just from there, and it's literally it just um, it just uh, spawns mail to link at the operating system. At which point they can email you in their um, in their own choice of uh, mail program, whatever. But if you do that, then it gives people the chance to get directly in touch with you. When people use it, then you get back to them. They're not being fobbed off. They're not trying to file a GitHub issue. Just let them email you. Um, if, they, if there should be a GitHub issue coming out of it, you file it. And that, to me, seems like a pretty cool idea to me, I have to say. Uh, right, okay, so this is, a, this is a standard GNOME GTK application. Pick already does all of this. Report bugs and ideas on GitHub, look. <laughs> uh, okay, 2017 to 2018. So it's obviously not being worked on. That's not all that encouraging. I mean, admittedly, I picked two completely random applications, but one of them um, has a copyright date of 2017 to 2018, has a version date of 2020, was last touched in April, and the other one hasn't been touched for 12 months and is using an outdated version of the runtime. But whatever, you know, this is at um, software stores for you. Okay, so that seems to work. So I can, I have installed Flatback. Yeah, whatever, go away. Oh, sorry, no. These don't have things that say OK and cancel and nothing to do with Flatpak or anything. Just This should say, uh, this is even in the GNOME HEG, this should say something like save and cancel or quit and cancel or worse. I have to say OK because I want to discard things. Uh, you just saw me get it wrong. Right, anyway, whatever. So, that seems fine. I can install Flatpaks. Uh, that works. You know, not that I were expecting it to not, to fail to work, right? I'm using a perfectly standard Ubuntu distribution, whatever. So, how do I build a flat pack? Building your first flat pack. Flat pack documentation. That's at docs.flatpack.org. Okay. So that seems like a good start. So introduction to flat pack. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a flat pack of pick, which is my uh, color picker. And I like it. And a lot of other people do too. This One of the semi-interesting things about this is I'll get some sense of usage comparison between, because I'll have numbers for snaps and presumably I'll have download numbers for Fatpak because it's my application. So uh, hopefully I'll get that and then I'll be able to compare them. Um, that that will be a really interesting statistic actually. So introduction to Fatpak. Uh, no, 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 right, okay. I know the basic theory stuff, I believe. Um, to be all kinds of desktop applications, but Picky is a desktop application, so that's cool. Um, yeah, uh, okay, duplicated work. Uh, no, I don't care about the, the philosophy stuff, is important to be clear. I'm not skipping over this because it's not relevant, I'm skipping over it because I mostly know about it. Um, it's one of the things that is important, I think, when you're building software, especially software for other developers to use, is that they understand why it is the way it is, not just that it is the way it is. So you're explaining the philosophy behind it so people understand why you've made the decisions you had and can therefore generalise that into understanding for themselves how it's going to work. If you understand why Flatback is the way it is, it helps you think, OK, I want to do this thing, how do I do it? And then you can guess most of the time. You imagine yourself in the position of the flat pack developers and go, well, they would probably do this, therefore I'll look there. And that's where it is. This is very useful. Right, so getting started. Uh, Garden how to use the flat pack command interface, tutorials for building simple application. Uh, basic concepts, building your first flat pack. Okay. The tutorial finds a quick introduction to building flat packs. In it, you will learn how to create a basic flat pack application which can be installed and run. In order to complete this tutorial, you should have followed the setup guide on Flatpak. You also need to install Flatpak Builder, which I will install as a flat pack. I think that makes sense. I can't think of any reason why I wouldn't do that. Man, okay, I hate the highlighting thing on Edge. Just go away now. That's the worst. That's really annoying. How do I do I'm going to fuck out and disable that. Right. Also, I don't know if anyone out there is listening, if um, if there's any CTOs out there who care or anything, but you see how I haven't had to use sudo for any of this, because I shouldn't have to. Uh-uh. Right. Uh, all the SDK. Another 500 megs. Crikey. All the flatback. Yeah, fine. Whatever, I guess. So, um, installing the, the flatback building software with flatback itself has a pleasing kind of roundness to it, do you not think? 
So that's installing. Install a runtime and a matching SDK. Flatback requires every app to specify a runtime that it uses for its basic dependencies. Each runtime has a matching SDK, which contains all the things that are in the runtime, plus headers and development tools. Frida Stock 2108 runtime and SDK. Okay. Huh. So, the question is, do I jump straight in and try and do it for pick and blunder about and destroy things like a bull in a china shop? Or, do I do it properly and actually follow the instructions? I think I'm going to follow the instructions. That makes some sense, doesn't it? So, let's give that a shot. Uh... Oh, while I think about it, um, if people have got thoughts on any of this, like things I should be doing or should be doing differently or whatever, drop in the chat and we'll have a look. If anyone's actually there, which quite possibly they aren't. Bill is, I know, or was, and that's cool. So, 2108 runtime SDK. So, now, I worked out earlier how to search. So, if I do flat pack search all dot free desktop dot platform. It should tell me the versions. And we'll see if there's a more recent version. Uh, shared libraries. Right, so there's a 2108 and there's a 2008 and that's it. Right, okay. So that looks like... Yeah, the 2108 branch, the 2008 branch. So it looks like there hasn't been a version released since then. So this documentation is tolerably up to date. Well played. So we'll grab them. Bosh. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yes, fine, go ahead and install another half a gigabyte of stuff. Have I actually got enough disk space for all this? Yeah, I'm running a bit low, but whatever. Okay, so. Let's give ourselves a place to do this in. So, the application will create for the tutorial and the symbols. So to create a copy of the following. Um, uh, what do I have to call it? Hello, dot show. Okay. I know that says bin sh, but let's try it with bash to see what happens. Okay. So, uh, got that. Add a manifest. This should be org.flatpack.hello.yaml. So, so we make this org.cryogenics. Now, what, that's got a capital letter, but other stuff didn't. But pick would have, so yeah. So we're going to call this hello. I don't know why everyone likes yaml so much, but whatever. So this is... Ah, maybe bash isn't going to work here, actually. Because it might not have bash in there. It's probably just going to have sh or dash or ash or something. So if we call it bin sh, that'll be fine. Right. Um, yeah, good. So, um, so we don't want it to be org.flatback.hello. We want it to... I wonder... I'm assuming that... That's actually not going to work if those two names differ. But then, if they have to be the same, why is the app ID specified in here when it's in the file name? But don't know. Run to version 2108, which it is. All the, so presumably I can just pick the most recent version in here, which I can just check. So, that's, so that makes sense. Yep, fine. Runs hello.sha. And the reason it knows how to do that is because it's got a shebang. Okay. Modules. There's the hello module. Right, okay. Which is the simple build system install oh man really okay slash app slash so is this what huh okay so the source is this this is listing all the things that go into the package the question is that's going in app bin is that going into some kind of um like it builds a file system image and then packages that up in the flat pack probably in a more complex application the manifest will save that this multiple 
the last one to be the application itself, the dependencies, the bundle of the apps are not part. Right, okay, yeah, yeah, um, I understand that conceptually. Now the app has a manifest, flatback builder can be used to build it. You specify the manifest file and a target directory. Target directories are always called build. And then we go flat pack. Ah, oh, this is because it's not in the search path. So where is it? Is it there? Also, the other question is I should be able to do it with flat pack run. So does flat pack list list my flat packs? Yes, it does. So if I do. So I bet I can do flat pack run org dot flat pack dot builder instead of just flat pack builder. So something somewhere sets up a bunch of uh, aliases or shortcuts or whatever. So I bet I can just pass it build, which is now in my build directory, and org dot cryogenics dot hello dot yaml. Okay, this will build each module that's in the list in IFS and install it to the app direct subject inside the build. Okay, so that looks like it worked. Um, so, in there we have export file metadata and var. So it should have gone to slash app, and it didn't. It went into build files bin. So why didn't it? There is, in fact, no app directory there at all, is there? Um, why has that happened? Um, SRL. So run is just similar to slash run. There's my hello, which is in file bin. Oh, hang on. Bear with me. Sorry, talk about yourselves. I have... A message but I'll have to get back to it in a second um, so export right this is not what has happened has it not happened because I got something wrong I don't believe so. So I think this is not correct. So we add this to the notes. Uh, that suggests that uh, the app is built in slash app. It is not. So that's quoting the thing. What I will do is I will include my uh, I'll stick that in there so I've just got it for reference for later. Okay. Alright. So, well, let's just blithely continue on. Uh, so, this is as a user install that build directory oh okay neat so this is basically you don't have to actually build a flat pack um this is um so this builds the un the flat pack builder builds the unpacked version this is like uh chrome extensions um and so you can so you can install it unpacked and then run it well that seems good uh Bill says, go put the kids to bed. Later, dude. Okay, thank you, pal. Um, cool. Thank you for um, showing up and pointing at a thing. I have no idea if anyone else is watching or anything, and probably they aren't. But whatever, this is interesting nonetheless. Um, so this says... So I'm coming back to this. This is building module hello. So we did um, org.cryogenics.hello. So that seems okay. So I should be able to now... Uh, do this. Do flat... Oh, no, actually, I've got to run org. And then to this, I pass dash dash user dash dash install 
dash dash force clean build, which is my build directory. Org dot cryogenics dot hello dot yaml, which is my manifest. Okay, that now ah now it says installing app. Org dot cryogenics dot hello x eight six eight four master. Okay. So that's it. Ah, so when this says, ah, so, um, it is not in slash app in the build directory. That's presumably where it ends up when the actual flat pack package is built from the build directory this is confusing so maybe I'll write a PR for the docs or whatever anyway uh, so I should not be flat pack run hey come on line um, completion well done flat pack okay so I should be able to run that and it works hooray Remove or dot cryogenics dot hello. Well, oh, that's interesting. It didn't ask me about that when I installed it. I suppose because it's like obviously you want to do it, you wouldn't have told me to do it otherwise. See with the change the user installation, yes. And if I run it now, it isn't there. Nice. Okay, I have built and installed a flat pack. Great station, you've made an app. Share the application, you can put it in the repositories past the dash dash repo argument to flat pack builder. This does the build again, and at the end exports the result to a local directory called repo. Note the flat pack builder keeps a cache of previous builds in the flat pack builder subdirectory. Okay, don't sound that bad with me. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna deal with this message. Have things coming in. Sorry, bear with me. Um, sorry, this is obviously very boring. People who are watching, but well, first of all, I don't think anyone is watching. Um, and secondly, I've got to do it regardless. So, right, uh, I'm going to just send this message. Uh, to someone who needs it. There we go, done. Right, okay. So, we'll show the application you can put it in a repository. This is done. So, when this says repository, this doesn't mean a GitHub, a Git repository. Or does it? Well, let's just do it for lols. Flat, oh no, I've got to run it with. So, dash dash repo. Dash, da, oh, dash repo equals force clean build org dot cryogenics dot it's weird that that doesn't complete um sure uh, it's not auto completing because it doesn't uh, exactly know which command I'm doing so I'm using flat pack run or dot flat pack dot builder but you would think it would auto complete to just files that are in the current directory and it isn't min free space percent wow am I entirely out of disk space no no I'm not so what does that mean then Writing content object, min free space percent, three percent will be exceeded, at least four point one kilobytes requested. Export failed. Okay. This is a GitHub repository. Or we'll sort of. Yeah, that's a GitHub. Well, that's the contents of a .git directory. I don't understand what that's for. 
Okay, so um, we're going to copy that and we're also going to drop that in our bug issue thing. Um, Bosch. Okay, that's another issue, uh, which I'll have to file or something, but whatever, right, okay, we don't know about this, it's something to do with publishing to um, thingy, which is a long way down the, long way down the road, so, uh, also, do I currently have pick installed, yes I do, so snap, uh, we'll remove it just so it's out of the way, so I currently don't have it. Okay, so when, when I build it and install it, then it will be definitely from the flat pack. Oh, Dan, hello. <laughs> um, no, I'm sorry, uh, you may have noticed people I'm not paying a great deal of attention to the live chat, so uh, I have no sense of how long it's been since you said anything, but hello, Dan. <laughs> nice to see you, pal. Uh, you are um, uh, in, in, in the chat, all right? Um, I'm studying how to build things with flat pack, which is... Um, uh, a way of shipping applications to Linux desktop operating systems, which people have asked me to do for an application that I already have, which is called Pick. It's a color picker. It's not currently available with flat pack. People have asked me to do flat pack, so I'm learning about it on a stream. Goodness gracious me. So, right, I'm gonna get back to where I was. Um, say hello in the chat <laughs> if you want to. Um, so, put the app in a repository. We know we're, now we're ready to add the repository that we just created and install the app. Oh! This is a repository like FlatHub is. Right? I... If you want to share the application, you can put it in a repository. Right. So this is how to build my local repository. Do I need to do that? I don't think I need to do it. I can't see why that would be even remotely useful to me. Sure, I might want to put it in Flat Hub, but I don't want to put it in like well. Okay, I don't want to dispute the application anyway because I want to get it built first. Uh, bear with me, it's got a follow-up message. Oh, Dan says, nice to see you streaming. I've got no idea what I'm doing, man. <laughs> this is I'm utterly incompetent at this. Um you may have noticed on the um, that there was a previous link where it turned out that uh, I was managing to stream about one frame a minute because my machine, which is powered by a potato, can't handle full screen streaming at 1440p. <laughs> so I had to step down the screen resolution, kill the stream, restart another one, step that down to 720. Now it seems to be working. I'm the best at this, seriously. Bear with me, I've just got to um, reply to this message here. But, uh, Right, so, uh, I don't think I have to build my own repository. I don't think that's useful to me at the moment. So we're going to skip over that. <laughs> Dan says, excellent. <laughs> I am not all that excellent. Always left to try that, so I did this. Good. So, building. Detailed information about the applications of flat bag. Overview of the build process, requirements for applications. So I've done that. So I've done building your first flat bag. Right. Okay, so building introduction. Flatpak Builder, and I pass it a build DIY on a manifest. Yep, sure, fine. Uh, I've got to specify an SDK, which is going to be the GNOME one for PEC. And I'm presumably going to need Python in some way or other. Requirements and conventions. So I need to do desktop integration, which I'll be fine with. Um, application IDs. Reverse DNS. Yep, so that'll be all dot cryogenics. Uh, bad IDs. Oh, you yeah, don't end it with desktop. Fine, yeah. Foodoggyhub.io may be unique to your project. It does not include the project-specific identifier. 
Well, we have three, but we should. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. So what this is saying is that um, uh, if I, if I, if this would be like me calling my thing um, uh, io dot github dot stuart language, which would be stupid. It should be io dot github dot stuart language dot peck, um, which this mostly applies to um, projects where the name of the project and the name of their application is the same. That's okay. So I understand that. That is not available on the dbus. Fine, whatever, because it'd be all the quadratics dot peck. Project, maybe host or GitHub, like follow the GitHub.com domain. So you should IO dot GitHub. Okay. I'm not sure I have any control over the IO of GitHub.io domain either, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Don't care. App data files provide metadata for applications. App data files should be named with the application ID and the app data.xml file extension. So I've got to work out how to write one of these, obviously. Um, application icons, I already have one. Icons should be named with the application's ID being either PNG or SVG. It must place in the standard location. Okay. So I've got to do a desktop file. Right. So then, this thing here, this shows how to build it. So presumably, what I actually want is a bunch of build commands which just install this thing that already exists in Pick. I've, I've definitely already got, already got a desktop file. I've already got um, an icon. Uh, I haven't already got an app stream file, an app data file, but presumably I could write it. Um, and it's going to be a bunch of install things which install them to slash app slash this path. And then I'll just do the flat pack builder command. Okay, that makes sense. Minimal desktop, I've already got this. Data file validate, extra data, rarely downloaded when installing. As such, the unavailable flat will automatically support during the build process. So, oh, is that for I'm shipping my two kilobyte map viewer, but I'm not shipping the hundred gigabytes of maps or whatever? Yeah, okay. I'm assuming that that's like this is like extra packs in APKs for Android. Okay, we can we can go with that. Technical conventions. Dbus file system layout, yeah, yeah, fine. I'm using the, I should be using the XDG base directories, and if I'm not, it's a bug in pick. If you stay at home, flat point 1.13 and later, I'm assuming I have a more recent version than that. I do. Ooh, I don't. 1.6.5. So that is older. Huh. So should I be using the PPA then? I think maybe I should be using the PPA. Because that is ancient if 1.13 is out. So let's check, get set up. I want Ubuntu. Um, here's the Flatpak PPA. Well done, Google. Latest stable versions of Flatpak. Okay, <laughs> so the most recent version was one point. So when this says one point thirteen, what this means is this is super duper recent. Wait, wait, I've lost it now. Is it gone? One point thirteen later. Is it? Oh, state home, state data such as undo. Oh, I don't care. About that. I don't use that. Right, fine. Okay, fine. I don't care about that. Good. Right. <laughs> I'm like, what? I honestly was worried there. I thought, crikey, but I've never even used XD. I'm not surprised XDG Stay Home is only supported by Flatback 1.13. It's obviously only, only in the most recent, latest version of GNOME because it's brand new. I've never even heard of it. I bet things like XDG.base directory doesn't understand about that. I bet. If you use the Python thing, which grabs XDG based directories, it doesn't know about that, and you have to use glib. Anyway, so that all seems fine. Dependencies, a number of different options. So I need a runtime. I'm not creating a runtime. Not interested in that. So I will use whatever the most recent GNOME version is. Fine, because uh, I'm assuming it's going to work. If it doesn't work, then we'll fix it. Um, 
base run times and bundling. Bundle whatever libraries or dependencies they want. Yeah, okay, this is like snaps. You can shove anything in your flat pack that isn't part of a runtime. Cool, yeah, libraries, different versions. Whatever, yep, yeah, data, yep, yeah, no worries. Okay, I don't care about that. I don't have any extra libraries. I'm not doing anything very complicated. Um, so that should be fine. Yeah, uh, I don't need base apps. So, oh, Electron applications, right. So this is everyone, so everyone doesn't have to bundle all of Electron into their flat pack. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Flat pack builder, which I've already used. Yes, I have used that. The repo allows the repository to be specified the application to be exported to. So presumably, when I'm going to flat pack, when I'm going to flat hub, I have to care about that. But I currently don't care about any of that. Uh, manifest. Is, oh, I could be a JSON file. Right, maybe might make it a JSON file. So I have to do stupid YAML, but whatever. Um, uh, specify app ID. Yeah, I understand that. Runtime, runtime version. Yeah, so am I only allowed one runtime? So org.freedesk.platform has things like shirt in it um all the gnome dot platform has the gnome platform okay right given the platform so what's the difference between a platform a runtime and an sdk specifying a runtime runtime version of the runtime is needed by application to be automatically installed on user systems yes i understand that. right file renaming the names of the best way we know for directing the application source. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm sure the best thing to do is to reorganize all the source that I've got just in order to um, make building a flat pack okay. How about I don't do that? So um, they would say it's more important that you build flat packs and then everyone else is the thing that gets renamed, but you are second to this party flat pack. So. Flatback Builder allows them to be renamed as part of the build process. This can be done by specifying one of the following properties in the manifest. Rename icon, rename data file, rename app data file. Each of these properties accepts the name of the source file to be renamed. Okay, that's pretty cool. This renaming method can introduce internal naming conflicts. <laughs> yeah, right, whiners. Um, okay, that's pretty cool, though, because what that means is I can just do rename icon, colon, and then my icon name, and it will automatically call it org.cryogenics.pec.png or whatever. Good. I like that. Applications require access to resources outside of their sandbox to be useful. Finishing is the build stage where the application sandbox... Will... Right, okay, this is... So I need... X11 access, and I probably don't need anything else. I don't need to save files. I do need to save my uh, my application's permissions, uh, my uh, preferences, and what have you. But I'm assuming that I don't have to care about the rest of this stuff, and I'm assuming that I get access to um, MTG directories out of the box, so I shouldn't need that. Right, okay. Clean up. Sure, this is how I have to actually do builds because I'm using some kind of ancient programming language that has to be compiled. Whatever, I'm not doing that. Oh, and I can just run an arbitrary command. Brilliant. Okay. Modules. Modules to be built as part. Ah, so I'm just going to build one, which is called PEC. Great, because I don't need others. Simple applications. Yeah, 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 yeah. And sources. Oh, right. Okay, nice. So, so here's a question then. This is the thing to download it. So what that would mean is, just given this file and nothing else, I can build the flat pack because it will go away and download it from GitHub or whatever, which is nice of it. But if that file is in the repository. Should they be file URLs that look at itself? Or should they point at the repository they were in? Will that make... Is Flatback clever enough to go, Oh, you've already got this. Git repositories, bizarre. Oh, bizarre repositories, nice. Sorry. The late lamented bizarre that no one uses anymore. Um, file, local file. These are copied into the source directory. Oh, and I can just run a shell script. Okay, so. Uh, there's a question there then. Um... Should a flat pack file in a GitHub repo 
have a sources entry that points at the repo URL or should it use file sources that point at at files around it don't know the answer to that so I need to try and work that out by maybe looking at some things so it will be useful to find an application in Python on GitHub that we can have a look at. Models can be built with a variety of build systems, including a simple build method, also available, which allows a series of commands to be specified. That's what we want. Oh, the build API. <laughs> I wonder what that is. Browse all the manifests hosted by FlatHub. Oh, so FlatHub publishing is just put it in GitHub. Is it? That's pretty neat. Okay. Hands up if uh, you can see anything in Python. Bosh. Yay! Updated 12 minutes ago. Well done. Outwicker. Dot Genia dot net. Oh, crikey. Okay. Um... Outwicker 3.1. So, Flatpak pip. Right. So, this is runtime version 41. Here it's finished. This is all stuff. That, this is a terrible way of specifying anything. Like a dash dash whatever. Like they are actually args to the command finish. That should just be a list or something. That's weird. Don't like that. But whatever, right? That doesn't matter. Um, so, this is built to be simple. No autogen is true. How do I have to put that? So this links to itself. Oh man, I'm gonna have to care about all the Python setup.py stuff, aren't I? Now, Pick does have a bunch of that stuff because Martin Wimpress wrote it. Wrote it because we need it for a snap, but I've never understood it. So this is probably going to be useful to have this. Um, Although this is pretty complicated because it's got a bunch of different modules, so I'm going to pick something else. Sorry, Genie. I'm sure your thing is cool. That is uh, from uh, a Brazilian government thing, which means that a lot of the comments like to be in Portuguese. I'm not using an internal flat pack tool. Telegram desktop is not written in Python, is it? It's also way too complicated. Um... Okay, so updated two days ago. That looks good. What's, what even is this? Oh, one issue, no stars. Yes, this is going to be pretty small, hopefully. Let's have a look at this. So that is app data file, desktop, an icon, the YAML file. Update version. Where is the source? Oh, this isn't the application itself. This is just... The metadata stuff. Use tar archive instead of app image for building flat pack. Ooh, okay, flathub.json. Right, okay, so let's have a look at this. So this uses a simple build, it creates a directory, copies everything into app bin viper. Okay. And then it does install with the things into the right things. Okay. <laughs> right, and then the sources, there's a script file which runs SciPack wrapper. What the heck is that? And then there, so this goes and gets the. Right, so what this is doing is this is pointing at itself. This, this file tells it how to build. Um, this 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 file is all you need to build this application. It knows how to go and fetch the source for the application. It's not meant to be bundled with the application. That is interesting and weird. And I don't understand it. But okay. Uh, oh, spelled that wrong there. Um, seems that it should point at the repo. Question mark. Certainly seems to. Right, okay. Uh, 
again, if anyone is watching this and knows the answer, then do tell me. <laughs> okay, so back to here. No, back to here. Yes, so the simple build method is going to be what we want. Sandbox permissions. No access to any host files except the runtime, the app. Oh, what? Oh, they're host files. Okay, which is fine. Um, I want um, XDG cache home, uh, but that's presumably not a host file because I'll have my own little copy of it. I don't care about any of the other stuff apart from the fact that I need to be able to read from X uh, because that's how PIC works. It lets you click on things and then pick up the color of it. So it unavoidably needs X. Uh, I have not and will not port it to Wayland. And it needs X access and needs to do things like fiddle with the X cursor. So that might be hilarious. I don't care about any of those things because I don't do any of them, or apart from taking screenshots, but hopefully we're just going to go, we've got X, so give us that. If this doesn't work, uh, we'll share IPC notes, but those are necessary for X11, so we need both of those. We need X11, uh, and we need share IPC. Okay. So... Um, for finish args, we need socket equals x11 and share share equals ipc for x. Okay. I don't think we need anything else. We don't need any sound. We don't. I don't think we need OpenGL. Um, we do pass, um, we do construct images on the fly and then give them to X to use as a cursor. Be interested to see if that works, but I don't think it's an open GL thing. We're not, we're not using GL to do it, certainly. Uh, we don't need the network, so we should be fine. Um, we don't need Dbus because we ultimately get our own namespace, we don't use it anyway. Uh, talk permissions can be frequently used, freely used. So those recommend, what the hell is talk? So we do a Dbus. Okay, don't know what that is. Uh, Finally, with XDG down. Oh, but those are user-owned XDG download folders like music or whatever. So I don't care about any of those. So that's all good. I don't need devices. I don't need decomp. I don't need GVFS. Guides. Python. Many Python applications use custom installs with XDG installed to set up tools and pip. For these cases, Flatback Builder used provides the simple build system rather than automating the build process simpler. But see, here's the thing. I think all the setup.py stuff I do basically pulls in GNOME things. I don't think I need it. I reckon I can just copy the files. You know the babbins, it won't actually work with the quest mod. Right, see, this uses things like requests, which I don't have. Flatpak pip generator. Can you, I don't think I use anything that complicated. So, uh, drive archive programs. Color picker. Right, so that's the app. Uh, that doesn't need anything. That doesn't need anything because it's empty. Right, this needs GTK stuff, which is going to be in the Knackers, Cairo. Knackers. Okay. Built in, built in, built in, built in, built in. What are Rambus sub process? Built in, though. Built in, built in. What's color sys? Uh, built in. Sweet. <laughs> okay. Cairo, though. Gosh, pecking, darn it. I'm going to have to... Be... No, I have to do a bunch of awful flipping setup.py stuff that I don't understand. It's because stupid car. What do I use it for? Oh, that's how I create the image services for the cursors. Damn, I do need that. Okay, so, um, <laughs> well, work in Unity. I, I, when I wrote it, Unity was great, and it still is great. They just took it away. Right, okay, what are you sub-process for? 
Oh, I play the sound. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, maybe maybe we need that. Um, but I don't actually care that much about the sound. So dash M peg. Right there, it is. Oh. So there's peg, right? And then if I go choo, and I grab and I can zoom in. Look. Oh, blimey. Oh, wow. Okay. Um. Uh, OBS doesn't like it when you do that. <laughs> okay, so let's just grab that. And then it plays the um, camera snapshot sound. I don't know if you heard that. Um, but the way it does that is by shelling out to Canva GTK Play, which I probably don't have. So we're going to ignore that for now. Perfectly happy with ignoring that. Right. Also, wow. <laughs> this moans about a lot of stuff. <laughs> Crikey, O'Reilly. GDK.DeviceManager.GetClientPodge. What? When all that stuff is done, oh man. Hey, I've got an idea, GTK people. Stop changing all the damn APIs every five minutes. Anyway, I don't think I need anything. For all the penalties aren't very many, can be sort of used as a simple method described above. Yeah, yeah, they could. So I might just do that. Uh, Python 3 Flatback Pip Generator requests. Flatback Pip Generator. Whence comes this file? Do I install it with Flatpak? Talk to automatically generate Flatpak build a manifest JSON with package name require, requires requirements parser. How do I search with pip? Pip list. Yeah. Pip search. Go. Pipo's XML RPC API is currently disabled, so I can't search for pip. Oh man. The hell am I going to get Cairo from? Um, let's go look in the cheese shop then. Cairo. This is going to say, don't use Cairo. <laughs> and I'm going to say, I don't have any choice in the matter. Is it Pipo? Import Cairo with code SVG surface. Is this what I'm using? I think this is what I'm using. So, installing Cairo requires Cairo, including. Oh, so, I need actual Cairo is surely part of the GNOME, uh, what do we call them, platform. You would think so, anyway. Um, so presumably all I need is the Python bindings. So I can surely just do pip install or whatever. But let's try this. Oh, I can just get shot of that, I think. And that. And that. And that. And right. So this. Python3-foo.json can be included in manifest like. What? You can also list multiple packages in a single command. If your project contains a requirements.txt file with all the project dependencies, you can use that. Alpha PyPy dependencies. Well, let's just grab this for lols and see what it does. Python 3, flat pack, pip, pi, Cairo, Cairo. Requirements modules is not installed. Run pip install requirements parser. Ha, okay. I'm not installing you globally because that never happens. So we're going to have to do it with a virtual environment. So... Uh, and then we're going to go pip install requirements parser. And then we're going to go that. Don't download the whole bloody thing. 
It's going to install it. Oh, no, it isn't. It's just downloading it, and then it needs to... You need to download it and install it to work out what it depends on. Crikey. Okay. Hopefully this isn't too big. So this... Okay. That doesn't seem hard. Right. Okay, fine. So I can just include that as a as like a module. Cool. And PyCaro appears to be um uh, independent. Uh, so it doesn't have any dependencies itself, so that's okay. Right, back to where we were before. So yes, I can do that. Um is that it? Okay, so then, what have I actually got here? I've got, oh, pick color, pick color, pick app data. XML. Really? Oh no, this is going to open in something weird. Yeah, no. Why XML files are associated with Chrome? I don't know. I should probably fix it, but life's too short. Right. Okay, screenshot, home page. Cool, I've already written this. By which I mean, Martin Winpress has probably already written this. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty cool. So there's pick color, pick of this. Desktop file, which I know is real. Um, there's the icon, which I know is real. There's a snap that I built. But now, you see, Snapcraft builds all the snaps, so that's fine. There's a screenshot, but I don't care that much about that. Read me, don't care about that. Uh, ooh. Right, okay. So I need a flat pack build script, do I? Or do I not? And I just want. No, I'm going to document the command, aren't I? So. And this is going to do this is a bash script for now if it gets any more complicated than the very basics then I will make it a Python script but we need to build pick with flat pack builder in directory flat pack build Okay, and that's going to look like flatpack run org dot flatpack dot builder. Flatpack build org dot cryogenics.pick.yaml Thank you. Well picked up um, shell check or whatever the hell you are that was doing that. Uh, okay. I'm assuming I don't have one of those. No, I don't. So I need that. Okay, and this needs to look like, don't I already have one of these? Yes, I do. Yes, yes, I do. There you go. I'm on it. So, this needs to be org.gnome.platform, and the runtime version is a 42. I don't know what that means. So, now, let us go back to our friendly working version which is here. What does, an S what does SDK mean? I'm looking it up. Right, manifests. Uh, complete this Flatpak Builder command reference. A Flatpak manifest man page. Well, that's good. So it's local. Well done. Um, so, examples. Yep. Um, 
Right. SDK, the name of the development runtime the application builds with. So that's presumably org.gnome.sdk then, is it? Next question is, where's Python? This just mentions free desktop and Electron. But is this even Python? Okay, I suddenly mistrust you. I think maybe because you've got that file in there, it counted you as a Python thing, and I don't think you're actually a Python thing at all. So let's go look at this. Or this. Uh, FluentReader.yaml. Now you're an Electron thing again. You. Let's look at the desktop file to see how it runs it. Start here, have desktop. What? This is literally GitHub desktop. No, God. You're all repositories. All repositories written in Python. God, there aren't many. There's only 52 flat packs in Python? Really? That is not many. Ah, these are presumably ones which are hosted by FlatHub because they're not anywhere else. Um, because they're third party, but which means this is probably not going to be a very helpful list, annoyingly. Um, oh, oh, a message in chat um, saying, Stu, you could probably have dragged Martin as a guest for this stream. Yes, I could have done, but then it wouldn't have been me learning about Flatpak. It would have been uh, Martin doing things about Flatpak and telling me and me pretending to remember. I'm not actually going to discover anything all that useful if I do that. So I'm hoping. That I will actually learn something by doing it this way. This OCR feeder, that sounds like an actual application, doesn't it? Um, and not some kind of third party. Oh, crikey, O'Reilly. Look at all this. Um, complete. Yeah, fine. Where's the flat pack? Look at all this rubbish. Jeez Louise. Okay, I don't, oh, I don't even know where the... Um, the YAML file is for that, so we're not looking at that. Petty bit. These are all really complicated things. Right, okay, let's look at this one. So, this depends on the GNOME SDK. I don't care about those. Wine. Oh, God. I don't think these are Python at all. <laughs> but whatever. Okay, right. I, right. Official thing, I don't care. Um, Can I suggest an alternative approach? Sure, yes, absolutely. I'm happy to hear... Um, uh, suggestions for what I should do. I don't have a very good sense of how far I am. You are behind me, and the answer might be quite a way. So back and forth is not necessarily the most efficient thing. But uh, I am more than happy to hear uh, an alternative approach. Meanwhile. This is going to be pick. Uh, the command to run it will be python3 m, and then it will be pick, but we'll have to put wherever our thing is. Hang on, why am I filling in a command? What do I need a command for? It's what I've got a desktop file for. What does the desktop file even say? So this just runs pick color picker. Which means it assumes it's got a name, which the snap has. So I need to then make sure there is actually an application with that name. Which means I need a little tiny... Uh, shell script called pick color picker which ends up in app bin don't I so um, picker run script dot show we'll call that and that does 
bin bash or bin share sh should be fine now actually python 3 dash m peg but that might need to set the python path maybe so let's do that and then this this will want to copy that file into at bit so so we'll do that so we'll do what does install dash d do Create all leading to, oh right, okay, fine, just like MKDIRs. Right, fine. So this wants to copy, pick color, pick a run script. Actually, I'm going to call it flat pack run script. Uh, pick color, pick a flat pack. Run script dot sh. Someone reading this might be like, why in goodness his name are you doing, uh, have you got given this this ridiculous name, why is it not just called its eventual name, which will be pick color picker? And there is a reason, I'm not crazy, and the reason is, I don't want it to feel like it is for running it in this directory, because it isn't. Um, it's not, it'll be in the repository, but you're not supposed to use it, it's part of the build system. So I don't want people to use this to run it. I want um, people to uh, ignore it. So uh, I want to copy that to pick color picker. Interestingly, does it set the permissions? I suspect not, and I need to make it executable. So do I chmod it? Yeah, I probably chmod it, don't I? Uh, so... Um, do, 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 do. I want to mod a plus x. Do I need to set explicit permissions on it? No, it'll be correct of what it is, and then I can just add executableness to it. Okay, and then I also want to copy the pick directory without PyCache to somewhere. Where do I put it? <laughs> that is a good question. Requirements and conventions. Where do I put things? This app data and stuff like this here. Blah blah. Where do I put like my stuff? Extra data. Where do I put just my files? Like the actual thing itself. Because the file system applications runtime. Top level app directory where the application's own files are located. So I'll just put it anywhere. I'll just put it in slash app slash like lols. Okay. So I'm just going to go cp dash r um, pick slash app slash pick. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I'm going to go. Rm dash rf slash app slash pick slash pycache and uh, since I'm using dash f, if it's not there, then it'll be fine with it. Uh, ooh, lots of things popping up all over the place. I don't really know what they are. Um, so let's have a look at that. Oh, these are people on Mastodon, whatever. Okay, cool. Right, so. Uh, so that builds it. Do we need this? Oh, presumably I do because it needs to download it. It needs to download the sources from somewhere. So, uh, that should be fine then. So, let's... Uh, I need to know how to do that. So, uh, I need to specify, oh, I've got to do the finish org thing, yes. Um, so, we'll do that in a minute. Clean up, yeah, I don't care about that. Right, that's what I want. So, sources, type equals git. Available types equals flatback builder command reference. Yep, okay, this is the thing, this is the thing I looked at before. Git. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. 
Okay, cool. That seems fine then. So let's get it from there. That is there. Except this probably needs to be the HTTP version, doesn't it? I suspect I've lost that down. Yeah, it's the HTTPS thing and it's a .git URL. So that's going to be that one. Get to there. That looks fine to me. So that should grab that. And then it copies the pick directory. Yep, okay. So that's good. And then we need to copy desktop app data and the others. So they, um, this is quite lazy uh, because I shouldn't really be getting this from someone else, I should be doing it myself, but nonetheless. I don't need all of those at all. Um, I just need that and that, according to our theory. Actually, I'll leave Pulse Audio. Actually, I'll leave Pulse Audio in for now. See if it works. Right. So the command is going to be pick color picker. Okay. Now. This module, this doesn't actually matter, but uh, the name of it, I wouldn't have thought, but I'm sure it's fine. So, this copies the run script, so we can name it pick color picker, and makes that runnable. It copies pick itself, and bins pycache folder if it's in there. So what this will do is it will check it out of there, and then it will copy that stuff from it. The next thing we need is all the icons and stuff. So, I mean, I'm not sure this list needs to go in pick but let's and this is going to be in slash app okay so I can just set the python path to be that then can't I yeah so where is my no it's gone fine python now it's possible that what I'm supposed to do is I'm meant to have slash app slash user slash lib slash python 3.8 slash whatever pick and then that's already on the python path and I'm supposed to put that in app but I'm just I just don't care <laughs> I'll just put it in slash app because this is internal to my flat pack so it shouldn't matter at least for now right so I need to grab all of the uh, other files which are so I can get rid of that uh, I can uh, requirements and conventions. So these, this is the thing. So I want to so basically app share meta info. So I want to I want to copy the metadata info file to there and is it just called org.quadrix.pet no uh, what's so that needs to be called org.cryogenics.pick dot App data.xml. So interestingly, I don't need that magic renamey thing, I don't think. Maybe I do. We'll have a look at that again in a second. So upstream util validate relax client views, check out data files for errors. Oh that's useful. Um so pick color picker dot app data dot xml. Oh I haven't got it. Okay, fine. <laughs> I hate my terminal bell. I love it. Um it gets my attention. <laughs> which is what it's for. That's the point of a terminal bell. Um, what time is it? God, nine o'clock nearly. How long have I been doing this? Like three hours or something. Been live for an hour and a half, according to OBS. Blimey. Okay. Right. So that looks okay. Right, good. So that installs it. Uh, I also need an application icon. These icons should be provided. It should be name with the application's ID. Ooh, okay. 
So now I have a bunch of icons. Yes. So. This build commands, is it real commands? Can I like do a loop? Probably not. Um, let's assume for now that I can't. And this would be uh, data. I'm just going to do the scalable one for now, the, the SVG. Have I got a scalable one? Oh no, I need, I need that and I need the real one. Okay. All right. Oh yeah, because I've got to rename them. Yes, this is the problem. Um, yeah, because they're all called Pet Color Picker, which is the name of the snap. And what I need them to be is all dot cryogenics, whatever um, pick, isn't it? So that is. Scalable apps all dot cryogenics dot pick dot svg. Yes, okay. And then I need that as well for uh, all the rest of them. What are they called? Uh, icons, scalable apps. No, I don't want scalable. I want, I don't know, 512. They're always called pick color picker. Yes. <laughs> it was me calling my butler. No, no, it isn't me calling my butler. <laughs> five twelve by five twelve, and then it's just called pick color picker dot png, and then here I move it to there. Um, so they go to icons high color. Yes, that's where they're meant to go. Five twelve by five twelve, apps org dot cryogenics dot pick dot png. Okay, so I want five twelve. So I've got 48, 32, 24, 22, and 16. Right. Uh, so, whack, whack, whack. That wants to be uh, 48 by 48. Oh, that's really annoying. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that a bunch of times because then I can just cursor down. 32, 24, 22, and 16. So now if I go ching, 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 like that, I can uh, delete those and make them 32, and then I can delete those and make them 24, and then I can delete those and make them 22, and then I can delete those and make them 16. Okay, so that installs the icons. Good. Desktop files need to be there. So I need to copy the desktop file, which is just to here, right? Yes, so, um, oh. so this is pick color picker dot desktop and it needs to be in app share applications and then the name. So it goes in app share applications all the quadrants dot pick dot desktop. Okay, minimal desktop file, yep, fine, desktop file validate, that's all okay. That should be everything. Okay, that will just work. What are the chances? First time, place your bets. I think the are the chances are low, but let's give it a shot. So, um, oh crikey, um, no, 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 oh, it wasn't in this window. That's why. Um, yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> so. Flat pack run org dot flat pack dot builder and we want it in the folder flat pack oh no I, I've got I've got a shell script for this moron brain. Yeah, look there it is. Um chance of this working? Oh, I need that installed. Okay, fair enough. 
flatpak install org.gnome.sdk. I use this remote. Oh, good. So it looks up in the remotes. Good. And I need 42 because that's the one I picked. So that's number 10. Okay. Which of these do you want to use? Presumably, I just need the real one. Oh. I've got to install both of them. Crikey. Rally low on disk space, kids. Only 5.7 gigs left. Anyone wants to send me like a massive SSD? That would be fine. <laughs> we shall see. I need a drink. Yeah. Right, so. Now let's have a look and see what comes up here. Uh, oh yeah, okay. It doesn't like the cache things, right? So let's try that again. Bosh. Oh, I haven't got the runtime either. Right. Can I just do that, I wonder? Yes, I can. Nice. And so that's though the slashes. Um, so it's slash architecture slash version. But I can just skip the architecture and just get the architecture that I'm on. So that's that's quite nice. Fatal. What? Did I not put double slash in? I bet it's not path. <laughs> I bet it's H. Yeah, URL. Okay, fine. Yes, fine. You're not wrong. That was actually my moronic fault. Oh, no. Wait, 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 wait. Don't check it out here. Ooh. And it's called app, too. That's interesting. Because... How do I set the name of the branch? Because for Peck, this is going to be annoying. <laughs> um, Peck has two branches, one called App and one called Website. Um, this screwed up Snap people as well. So let what we need to do is we need to look at the description of Git. Oh, I didn't do the Cairo thing, so it's not going to work when I build it, but whatever. Right, so what we need to do in here is we need to find... Right, so Git sources, path is a local checkout of the Git repository, URL is the Git repository, branch, the branch to use from the Git repository, well done, branch is app. Okay, so we don't need all of the rest of it, so let's try that again. Bosch, running unexpected file system suffix reset, ignoring, cannot stat. Because that's not in Git. Ha! Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, so what's in here that we need to add? That and that. Okay, that seems fair. So, so let's add that to the Git repo. Short shell script. Well, I should have, uh, provide shell script to run app with single name for flat pack. We should also, at some point, put org.pick.org.quadrant.pick.yaml in the repository as well, but we're not going to do it yet. So let's try that again. Oh, I have to get push it first. Push. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a bunch of merged PRs. Yeah, yeah I don't care about that. This is going to rebuild the snap, but I don't care about that either. Um, okay. Um, build it again. Ooh. 
Should I delete that every time, man? Oh, I'm just going to stick force cleaning with shell script. You can see multiple building from scratch. It's not that big. Um, so flat pack build. Uh, I'm going to dash dash force clean. Sure. Let's try that. Okay. Unexpected file system. Suffix reset. Ignoring. Okay. That seems encouraging. So now I can run it, right, from here. How did I do that before? I need to look at the very beginning stuff, getting started. How did I install it from an unpacked directory? So I need to do in here so that's my unpack directory so i do flat pack builder uh, flat pack run org dot flat pack dot builder dash dash user dash dash install dash dash force clean flat pack build org dot cryogenics dot pick dot yaml Oh, did I just rebuild it? No matching update of org.cryogenics.pick. Okay, icon not matching app ID. In pick color picker. Yeah, fine. Yes, I'm not disagreeing with you. That's not wrong. I need to fix that. But that shouldn't be the problem. So what's wrong with that then? Does that need to be the proper name of it? I wonder. This is saying no matching app data for .pick. So what that suggests I can't imagine that the icon is the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I get that. I'm going to need. Am I going to need two versions of the desktop file? Maybe I can just set the desktop file into being. Um. Uh, maybe I'll just set it into being the right thing. Yeah, but well, I want to see someone else's desktop file because it, it, do I put? Icon equals org.cryogenics.desktop. I don't need the PNG on the end or what. So, I don't actually know. <clears throat> so, what I want to see is your desktop file. But I need... No, these are, these. this is not going to contain the desktop file, is it? Because these are the, um, the things that are just in flat, uh, flat hub. So, what I need is an actual application in flat hub and then like which is in github so i can go and look at his desktop file so let's pick something simple again let's look at utilities add hours a minute simple calculator uh publisher see details nope your gpl but you don't provide the source doesn't seem to be a way of getting the source which is against the gpl <laughs> Well done. Strong work there. Oh, that's a website. Oh, that's probably what I've got to click on, which means that previous one was probably okay. I bet this is a link. I bet that previous one was a link to GitHub. <laughs> and hours and minutes. Quite pretty looking app. So good effort there. And hours and minutes. Download. No. Um, acknowledgements. Crashlytics didn't necessarily spy on you, you know. Okay, so. Um, where's your desktop file? Have you got one? Oh, you've, you've got a snap as well. Well done. Metadata. Uh, dot desktop, right, okay. Icon. Oh, right, yeah, but at least it's, it's just dollar app ID. So, what I want 
Oh, look, exactly what I suggested earlier. What did you suggest earlier? Did I miss that suggestion earlier? Sorry about that. Um, okay, anyway. Um, so, if I were to do... Um, said... S icon slash... Uh, dot star slash icon equals orb dot cryogenics dot pick uh, on pick color picker dot desktop that would be correct and it doesn't care about the exec so I mean I didn't straighten the shell script there but um, making this be a command like python 3 dash m pick when i can't set the python path sounds complicated so i might as well have it run the script uh, okay so uh, i'm going to do that then so uh, i don't want the install dash d oh i do that because oh my god i've got to create the damn directory for it right okay so where do i create the desktop file so um what i want is Uh, and then I want that. App share applications. Does that work? Is this this thing which runs build commands? Is it given to a proper shell? Doesn't seem very clear. Because that's a shell command. It doesn't. It's got redirects in it. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work. Okay, let's give it a shot. Bosh. What? Renaming all dot to share app data all the way. Why are you renaming it? It's correct. Massive great big whiner. Right, running. So, find. Flat pack builds dash name star dot desktop. Yeah, did it. <laughs> right, so that worked. This is encouraging. Right, so now let's try installing it from there again. That does the installation. No matching app data. So is that because it did the rename thing? It might be. Cache it for pick color, exporting it to repo. Everything cache checking out from the cache. Why isn't that working? It's not finding the metadata, why is it? I don't understand why it's renaming it because it's correct. But it says renaming, maybe it's just moving it or taking a copy of it to share app data. Is that where I'm putting it? No, I'm putting in app share meta info, but presumably it knows best and wants to move it there. I don't know what the unexpected file system suffix reset ignoring means. And that's a lot of errors. But let's assume it's okay. Because this line, this install dash D thing, that's correct because I got that right out of the flipping thing, didn't I? The initial build. Yes, that puts it in app bin hello dosha, even though there is no slash app. So that's okay.
I'm frightened of this. <laughs> but it doesn't have any wild cards in it, so it's got to be okay. But I'm frightened of running RM-RF in things. The other thing is it says it's running these, but where is it running them? <laughs> it doesn't actually seem to be running them in any significant way, because there is no slash app to run them in. Catch you later, so you've got to head out. So thank you very much for showing up. Um, I've no idea if I've made any progress at all, but cheers. I mean, <laughs> um, thank you very much. Best of luck. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, very kind of you for popping along. Thank you very much. I wonder, let's, um, uh, yep, yeah, okay. Oh, I've got a message. I've got a message from, oh, nothing interesting. Right, um, so here's the next assumption here that this is going to be because I've missed something very obvious out of somewhere. Uh, this is probably still going to fail because of the Cairo thing, but shouldn't matter. Oh, that's not very helpful. So let's no matching up data for. Wow, hardly anyone's got this error. That's annoying. Installing app org.cryogenics.pick. No matching up data for org.cryogenics.pick. So why did that work for the previous one? That's the same as that, isn't it? Installing app org.cryogenics.pick x a six six four master. I should that be master? Why is that master? I don't know whether that means master as in the GitHub uh, branch or whether just Flatpak also has names for its version and the the tip version is just called master and that's a bit poor bit. It should be called main Flatpak. But whatever. Um, you know, just make that one small change. Wouldn't hurt. Wouldn't. Anyway. Exporting all .pick to repo. Okay. That all work. Did I miss something in this? So I added a manifest. I built it with that. Tested it. I installed it with that, and that's the bit that's not working. Install force clean flat pack build org dot. So I build it with. Oh, build it with my script, moron brain. Which does flatback dot run all the yeah flatback build is the folder to build it in. It forces it to be clean, so it wipes it, and it calls it all dot cryogenics dot pick dot yaml. Wait, we pass it that file, which is this file. This file lists app ID as all dot cryogenics dot pick. Oh. I bet the app stream has its own name in it and it's wrong. Is it? I bet it is. Uh, where's the app stream file? What do you call the app stream file? Yeah, pick dot color. Yeah, pick color picker dot app dot yaml. Yeah, you see, it's not there. Ha! So, I need to set that as well. Right. Okay. Ah, uh, you see. So, where's my build script? So, we don't want to install that. We have to... We have to mkdir-p the folder that it goes in. And then we have to set we have to set pick color picker dot desktop into being org dot cryogenics dot pick dot desktop in the file pick color picker. The 
dot app data dot XML outputting it into outputting it into this but in app share meta info ha 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 this feels promisingly like it's gonna work yes it does yeah right let's try that again so bear with me so that um, it creates the directory and then it says pick color picker dot desktop into org dot cryogenics dot pick dot desktop in the app data file and push the output in org cryogenics dot pick and then now why is that there already does that mean I deleted the wrong thing before No, it's duplicated the line. Right, cool. Okay. So I can just lose that then. Right, let's try that again. Build, 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 build. Okay. Now we install it. Ha 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 ha! Ha ha ha! Yes. And then we go flat pack run org.cryogenics.pick Boom! No! Death! Immediate death! Okay. That's discouraging. <laughs> Is there like a debug command or something? Fat pack. Right. Fat pack run. User system. I don't need dash this user. Runtime version. Branch to use. Directly run the command in. Arch. Don't start portals. Show debug information. So dash dash verbose. Okay. Add defaults. Allowing X11, allowing pulse audio, because I asked for it. B wrap failed to register. Org .free desktop .dbus error service unknown. But which dbus thing is it trying to register? I wonder if pick itself uses dbus but doesn't use the same name i think it probably calls itself something different um so which might be either it explicitly using dbus or it registering its own name with all of gtk application or just gtk application but under the wrong name or something so i don't think i use dbus itself which I do not, but I bet I do. Oh, it's called Pick Color Picker, that's why. Okay, let's... I don't want to change that, because that will change the name of it. People have already got it. That's really annoying. Okay, so I've got to call it that. I can't call it pick. So, uh, so I've got to change everything which runs that. So, this needs to be that. So, org.cryogenics.pick. And that's going to find it everywhere. So, I don't care about flat pack build. Oh, pants. <laughs> right, so oh, 
flat pack builder. Other than that, it's not mentioned anywhere, but in. So it's called pick. Pick the color picker.yaml. Okay, I've got to change it about a million kajillion times in. So this is called Okay. Oh man, this isn't gonna work. Because you're not allowed dashes, it's gotta be underscores. Which means Right, okay, no, then. So I've got to change it in the actual script, which means we actually change the name of it. Pants. So we change that. Okay. Oh, McPhail. Hello. I don't know how long you've been there. Um, uh, welcome to Stuart's House of Flat Pack Fun. Um, I am... Um, Currently, uh, attempting to build a flat pack of Peck, which is my color picker. Um, and I've just run into I actually got it to build, and then it runs, but then it uh blows up about Dbus. And I think this is because of inconsistency of naming. So, the issue is that, well, first of all, let me open um, this, yeah. You see, the the flat pack is called org.cryogenics.pick, but the application itself, the actual code of it, thinks its name is org.cryogenics.pick color picker. Um, unfortunately, this is not actually a legitimate name for things. Um, I mean, I basically didn't care when I did this, so uh, I just went ahead and did it. And so I thought I'd make it this, but. Um, according to Flatpak, you're not allowed to call things. It's because it's got a dash in it. It needs to be uh, underscores. So I'm just going to change this to this and see if that works. And then I need to work out whether changing... What what I'm worried about is that I send out this application, which is now called org.cryogenics.pick, according to itself in GTK application, to people who already have it installed, like from the snap. Is that going to screw anything up? I don't think it is. Because its desktop file isn't different or anything, that's not going to change in the snap. And in the flat, the flat pack never existed before, so that can't possibly be a problem. So hopefully that will just be okay. Now we'll find out. Ah, okay. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to use the opportunity to let you know all the things I hate when I try building a flat pack. Namespacing sucks. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, never mind. Uh, we shall see. So, uh, let's build it and see if that works. Why did that get a cash hit? Oh, because it's already got a copy of it. Blast. Which means that I need to push this to the repository. Can I? Yeah, I need to push this to the GitHub repository. Which means that if I... GTK application. Right, let's look it up here. So GTK application, and I pass it an application ID. The $64,000 question is... Is a valid application identifier follow the same format as DBus? You can have a dash in! With dash discouraging you up, yeah, fine. <laughs> well, I know that now. <laughs> right, so I'm not really supposed to use dash. It's okay, but it's not okay as a flat pack name. 
which means that's going to break. The hyphen character is allowed in application, but it's not allowed in flat pack. Yeah. Because <laughs> it replaced alpha with underscores. Yeah, yeah. You'd say that now. You say this now. Didn't say that when I built PEC, did you? No, you didn't. No. Bloody thing. Well, fine. Okay. Huh. So, um, the question is, does it screw anybody if I change it? If you already have PEC, and then you rename it, you get a new, you get an update of the application in the snap, and its GTK application ID is now different. Does that matter? I'm going to assume that it doesn't, but I'll put a note somewhere. Let me put this in my notes. Uh, we have changed the GTK application application ID from org.cryogenics.pick color picker to org.cryogenics.pick. You see, the snap doesn't care about your GTK application name, and nothing else I don't think uses it. So hopefully that's going to be okay. But uh, make a note of this somewhere in releases right okay so now I, I, I've got that to do anyway right so now uh, so I need to yeah I haven't changed anything other than that actually uh, right so re uh, change GTK App, app ID. Uh, app IDs aren't meant. To be honest with you, I don't even know that this is the problem, but I suspect that it is. I suspect that if you've got an application which tries to start up with a name, it probably tries talking to itself over Dbus. Um, because GTK application IDs are also Dbus names. This is why application identifiers have to follow the same format as what Dbus well known bus names. But I suspect flat packs. Uh, security stuff, the wrapper around it, which gives it access to its own name on Dbus and nothing else on Dbus. I suspect that's looking for, or it's giving it access to the Dbus name, org.cryogenics.pick. But because it thinks its name is org.cryogenics.pick color picker, then it's probably trying to, GTK application probably talks to itself over Dbus and fails. That's my guess. You might find this isn't actually the problem at all, at which point, I'm an idiot, and I've done this work for nothing, but it doesn't matter. To contain hyphen and flat pack app IDs certainly can't. So change it. Hopefully, this doesn't actually break anybody with the snap because pick doesn't really care about this ID and doesn't use it. If the if this breaks something for people using pick pick let me know. Yeah, I mean, if this sort of thing where you can't do it if you're Microsoft Word, because those people have written automation software which knows about your name and you have to like deprecate it 12 months in advance or whatever, but I don't have to because PIC's not that important. Okay. Let's try this again. So we build. It winds about a load of stuff. Then we install. With that, and then we run it. Ha ha! That's actually running Python. Yes, it is. Okay, so that's actually running my code now. It's not working. <laughs> 
0.9. So start everything first time. So this is actually like a bug in my code, is it? Oh, this is because it tries to be clever. Right, okay. So it tries to read its own icon. So I've got to write new code there. Sweet. <laughs> okay, so it goes looking in. Yeah, right. So what it's doing is it's going looking for its own icon. And it's going, I can't find it. Or like, I can find it. So else probably we're in a snap. <laughs> so. Uh, what I need to do then is I need to change that so that it picks it up from the flat pack. A small victory is still a victory. Yes, yes, Neil, hey, it is. Um, so what I probably need here is uh, if, so this should be else if os.environ.get snap. else probably we're in a flat pack the issue here is that I don't know what the path actually looks like and I don't want to have to push at the moment what we do is we build from the git repository but I don't want to have to uh push every random little change I make to GitHub in order to have it pulled down. But equally, I don't really want to change this so that it builds everything. So can I... You're not really supposed to do stuff like this. Um, can I uh, do this, which is well dodgy. But I should be able to just go copy that also into app pick. So that will overwrite main.py when I do the build. Uh, print probably in a flat pack uh, or stop list dir slash app can I ask dot list dir recursively also where does it copy the icons to in the app we know this right so I should be able to pick it up from there. So where does this actually do it? I can probably just work this out. Um, this goes to user share icons. 48 by, so this picks up the 48 by 48 icon. So I'm also going to do os.path.isfile. And then I want the, 48, the path to the 48 by 48 icon. Which is going to be... I can't find anything. Uh, this one. So, uh, right, hang on, if I do that and then I look for that file, so if it is there, we'll just know. So that'd be useful, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. That should be LF. Right, so let's build it again. I think this is going to fail to build because Git is up to date. So I'm going to have to rm-rf flat pack build. And then we build it again, and that way it'll pull it down and then copy it over. <laughs> oh no, hang on, we want flat pack remove. All dot cryogenics dot pick. Yes. Right, so now we build again. Fetches it all down. Eh, fail. Cannot stat. Does that not exist? Or do you not have access to it because you're in some kind of 
Oh, man. When it does the build, it puts it in some sort of stupid container so it can't actually grab the file out of it. Okay, then I need to, instead of doing this abysmal hack, uh, what I need to do is I need another another module, isn't it? Right, so I need... So I need one there called local pick. This is build system simple. Oh no, hang on, no, 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 I don't need another module. I just need another source. Type file. And then what do I call it? I can't remember. I've got to go and look here again. Path. So, so after we've done that, we need to do cp dash r. No, don't not dash r. We need to do main dot py, and we need to copy that into there. So what that should do then is it will presumably pull down git first, and then it will grab pick main.py and drop it in the top of my build thing that will copy the version from the checkout that will copy the one that f that's from the file and then it will overwrite it ha that should work that would be sweet if that worked well, let's give that a try Okay, no guarantee it's going to work, but let's give it a shot. Right, so now I should be able to install it with that. I thought I'd build it every go. I probably don't need the um, uh, allow clean or whatever it is. Anyway, um, and now I should be able to, uh, to run it with that. It will fail, uh, but that's fine. GDK device manager list devices is deprecated, probably in a flat pack. Ha ha ha! He's like on there, true. Yes, it is. Sweet. So, that's my little hacky line that I put in. That is all correct. So, now then, what I should be able to do is I can fix that now. So, back in here, uh, so we're in a flat pack. Uh, and I'm going to go so we'll call this F icon because it's in a flat pack and then what we want to do is uh, we want to do that but the same thing uh, except these are F icon using local flat pack icon and then we set the image to be that brilliant now it, it didn't throw an error this time, which meant that it ran on and hit a different error. So it's in handle commander, none type object has no attribute set property. Ah, oh, because I set the image. That's a bit slappable of me, isn't it? Where does it do that? Image.set property. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that, that's just a bug, that, which means it never got, never got tested. Right. So we set the image property there, yes. Uh, and then... That should be fine. Okay, so let's build it again. So we want to remove it first. I don't know if you can install it over the top. Popey in the house. Hello, pal. Welcome back. Um, hopefully you uh, you had a, uh, you had um, fun uh, dinner and what have you. Um, I'm going to build this again. Uh, it built. Okay, which is encouraging. Um, or did I remove it before? I can't remember. Did, yes, I did. So, now I should be able to install it with... Did I just do that? 
No, this was the build. Right, okay. I can install it from the unpacked directory with that. Dan says no tests. No. Um, on this, there are literally none for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's a desktop application. And secondly, I wrote it quite a long time ago. <laughs> so it is... It's difficult to test because it's a completely user-facing thing. But yeah, this is all excuses. It should have a load of tests and it has naught tests. And you are completely right. And I am the worst. <laughs> For which I'm very sorry. Oh, <laughs> no icon. But nonetheless, error opening color picker dot JSON. That's fine. Why didn't it load the icon? Should load the icon. It works though, check it out! <laughs> Grab that colour. Yeah! And it grabbed it from the screen and everything! <laughs> right, that colour. Yeah, mongoose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do all the name changes work? Yes, yes, they do. So now um, I've got those two things. Stupid lab colours, I'm not even sure they're right. Get shot of them. Um, <laughs> cute RGBA. Um, so, uh, that works. So now if I close this, and then I run it again, it should remember the colours. And it does. And it remembers its screen position. <laughs> right. Why didn't that work? Um, this should have said something along the lines of... Oh, it didn't actually print it. So it should do new from file. GDKMH.new from file. And then use that in that button. Why didn't that work? So I've W was, oh no, set default icon. So, ah, so that's not that icon at all. That's the symbolic icon, I bet you. And I'm also dodgily loading that from somewhere as well. Uh, GTK, oh no, no. Probably running locally, use the local one. Yep, doing the same thing. <laughs> okay. Man, this is the worst. So, uh snap icon equals that uh yeah and i'll go uh flat pack icon equals and then i want the path from up the top here wherever that was da -da -da. oh was it below there yes okay so um, I've lost it now. Yeah, flat back icon is that. It's very nice of me to do off stop path dot join. Oh, this is because it's um, going from where I am, whereas this has a full path, so that's okay. So, uh, in order to avoid this being too long, we're going to do uh, that uh, and because this is Python and Python's great, it will just run them together. And then I go if snap if os dot path dot is file snap icon image gdk image new from file snap icon elif flat Oh, no. Flat pack icon. Else. Print. Couldn't. Find the symbolic icon. Now, this actually needs to be the symbolic icon. So, this is in Scalable apps SV. Oh no, it's not called that. It's called. Oh, is it? Actually, what do we do with the symbolic icon? Do we rename that when we copy it over? I don't actually know. Scalable. Yes, yes, we do. Okay, so uh, that wants to be org.quadratics.pick.svg in scalable. Yep, that should work. Okay, so. Uh, we will remove it. I'm sure I probably don't need to actually remove it every go, but whatever. Uh, build it. 
don't know why it says unavailable file system, whatever. But install it. Run it. Yay! Got my symbolic icon. Ta-da! Pick works as a flat pack. Right, can I zoom? No, but I think I can't. I think the reason I can't zoom is because I'm using OBS, which is doing screen captures. So everything just goes, oh my god, it's the end of the world. This, this that this is doing where um, it, it, it zooms in. And this is probably not working all that fast for you because my machine is too rubbish to actually stream at any kind of decent rate. So this is probably super flickery. But what this is actually showing, if you're here looking at it, is um, a nice magnified circle as the cursor. But what it does is it actually changes the mouse cursor to be that image, um, which X has a whole bunch of weird problems with when you do it. Anyway, this is this is a color called Log Cabin. Um, uh, there it is in CSS. Uh, there it is in RGB. Very nice. So and then you can say copy. Oh, does that work? That's a good question. Uh, copy that. Paste it. Yes, it does. Good. So I don't need special rights to write to the clipboard. That's good. Now it's not. Oh, streaming is good enough for my phone. Neil says thank you, pal. Appreciate that. Um, you should you should ask Popey what it was like earlier. He said it was like it was like a slideshow. It was one frame a minute or something. So my machine is a bit too pathetic to stream fourteen forty <laughs> or to even capture at fourteen forty and encode it, let alone stream it. Um, and Alan was like, here's an idea, right? Look down the back of your sofa, pick up 10p and buy a GPU. And he's not wrong, but it can wait. So, that all just works. This is encouraging. It, oh, yeah, wobbly windows, look. More importantly, if I close it, fire! But I bet you can't see that. I bet it didn't capture that. <laughs> but, yeah, I get fire when I start and show up. It's really cool. Um, I'm such a sucker for that sort of thing. Right, that just worked then. So, that's good. Um... So I'm going to add uh, that. No, I'm not. Uh, uh, yep, git commit dash a dash m. Oh, no, actually, no, I'll probably do the thing. Correctly look up icon pass. Um, branch for snap and flat pack file system layouts oh this isn't going to work if you just run it like out of the directory because it won't have pick color pick a symbolic installed as a themed icon and neither of these paths will be correct. In theory, what that means is I should have like a local path in here which does the... Oh no, actually, no, 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 because the snap icon will work because this is where they are. It's Yeah, so it's the same in the snap as it is in the unpacked directory. That's why it works. Okay, cool. Do you enable the genie minimizing thing too? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm like, party like it's um, 2009. Dan says, I have a GPU set at the office doing nothing if you want it. Really? Ooh, okay. Well, Mr. Nunes, um, I mean, clearly I need to, I already owe you like a thousand beers as it is, but I should pour another couple of beers into you and I might take you up on that. Um, assuming this seems to be quite interesting. This seems to be working. So I'm quite enjoying this, sitting here, talking into thin air while writing Python code. So, uh, yeah, I mean, let, let's, let's, we'll grab a beer at some point and we'll have a chat about that. Um, okay, so quickly look up icon pass. Bars for snap and fat, but file system layouts and load the uh, symbolic and app icons. Correct. See, there's a question um, for you lot. And sure, you'll be like, why are you editing it in nano rather than a proper editor? But, but, you know, proper editor doesn't matter. The question is this. When you're writing um, git commit messages, 
and uh, they have lines longer than 80 characters. Do you make the lines as long as you want, or do you reformat them so all the lines are less... Do you hard wrap all the lines like this? Uh, less than 80 characters, or do you leave them as long as possible in the thing and then let GitHub wrap, GitHub wrap them when it wants to? I tend to leave them long because then they get wrapped properly, like paragraphs, in HTML layout. Whereas if I hard wrap them and you're in a big wide window, then it looks really annoying. It's like when you get an email and it's all line wrapped at 72, pick, 72 characters even though you don't want it to be. But not everybody agrees. So I'm interested in your opinion. Anyway. Do that. Uh, and now... Okay, uh, a flat pack build at least. Stage two is putting it in flat hub and so on. But we are at least approaching the idea of having a pick flat pack as some people have what's the phrasing I want here some people have graciously requested and others have ungraciously used as uh, requested while denigrating snaps right uh okay git push instantly all these pushes are going to be building it as snapcraft <laughs> hopefully it's not going to cause a problem um uh Not putting my build script in there because I don't really need it anyway. Um, that snap and the master source and everything is all ancient stuff. PPADL can go away now because we don't need it anymore. And it's not deployed anymore. And that's everything. So that's all good. So I'm going to put them in. Uh, hit ignore. Bosh. Update ignored things to ignore flat pack things and a bunch of ancient stuff which has been there forever, but whatever. Okay. Oh, can't use it with new Max. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> uh, I, I'm sure you, uh, could, could you use a separate GPU with a like a laptop anyway all the all the posh uh, separate gpus i've seen are all like this tall and an actual macbook is about that tall so i don't know what the deal is with external uh you, you know third party gpus um that you go and buy in a shop and a laptop um martin wimpress has some kind of weird external container thing which you plug like five gpus in and then you plug it into a computer with Thunderbolt or USB 3 or Firewire or something. And then it's super powerful, but he's weird and he does loads of complicated stuff that I don't understand. Um, and then presumably the next step up in the GPU front is Simon Butcher, who has like 10,000 GPUs on which he runs the most complicated AI things imaginable. Um, uh, think of the desktop effects you can enable with a 3080. Yeah, I, I don't need like the super modern GPU, honestly. Anything more powerful than the Commodore 64 on board thing that I've got at the moment would probably be fine for streaming. I don't need anything cool. <laughs> um, uh, Vim reformats my long lines. Not sure if that's what... Oh, Vim, really? Blimey, okay. Um, Ian Seeley says, I live commits long and I use Nano to write them. Except to call it Pico because I'm old. I, you see, do you call it Pico 
because you remember Pico, which I assume is the case, but you're not actually using Pico, right? Because it's closed source. The whole point of Nano is they clone Pico after um, uh, the University of Washington. Was it the people who made Pine? Um, and so, for those of you who don't know, um, Pine was a possibly still is, I don't even know if it still exists, was a, um, a text user interface mail client. It was the first mail client I used when I went to university in 1994. Um, and there were two, really, um, Unix uh, command line mail clients that were, that were um, text user interface full screen things. Uh, Pine and Elm. Elm was first, and it stood for something something mailer. And then Pine stood for Pine is not Elm. And it was made by the University of Washington. Um, and one of the nice things about it was it has a it had a built-in uh, editor, text editor. Uh, and the built-in text editor was very nice. And so, uh, unfortunately, uh, the University of Washington had a weird software license on Pine. Um, I can't remember the details of why it was weird. You had to you had to give them credit or you couldn't publish new versions without their permission or something, without the, the permissions of the trustees of the board of the University of Washington or something like that. Um, so people built, uh, two things came out of that, which are both fairly big deal today. One of them was MUT, which is uh, another text user interface um, runs in the terminal mail client. And that uh, people, I believe, pretty much anyone who's using text UI um, mail clients today in a terminal is probably using MUT. And it does like 60 billion things. And I eventually ended up using that at uni and all that. And I used it for years on Linux. Um, uh, through, through the, the late 90s and into the early 2000s and stuff like that before I embraced the idea of, you know, the GUI. And MUT's still super duper powerful. If you want a powerful mail client, it can do literally anything. It's, it's like Emacs or whatever, or Vim. But the second thing that came out of it was Nano, which is basically a clone of Pico. Um... So, and obviously it was called Nano as a joke on Pico. Um, Pico, I'm assuming Pico stood for Pine something, 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 meaning the editor. Um, but obviously Nano was a pun on it, was a pun on Pico because they're both um, SI unit prefixes. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, oh, more more things from people. Um, Dan says, I've got a case. Oh, this is the external plug in thing. Okay, wicked. I, the idea of... Taking your GPU and plugging it into a box outside your computer is like that thing where they put you in a hospital bed and then they pump all your blood out of you and then into a thing and then back into you again. It seems profoundly weird to me. I don't understand why anyone does it. Um, Ian says, I think it's an open source version of Pico and Alpine now. Really? Wow. Pico is open source now. Is um, is the icon um, a picture of a stable door bolted on a running horse? <laughs> The idea of going, no, no, everyone should use Pico because it's open source now, 25 years too late. <laughs> like, I feel like uh, that ship has sailed, University of Washington or whoever it is, did it? And says, yep, I'm old. I remember my university moving from Elm to Pine. I'm afraid I still use Alpine. Oh, sorry, not Alpine the, um, I thought you meant the, uh, the Linux version, the little mini containerized version that, um, that Amazon built because the didn't want to use Ubuntu. Um, but, yeah, Alpine is some kind of open source re-implementation of Pine. I think, I, I don't know much about it. I, I stopped using Pine um, when I, when I moved, I, I, I believe I moved to Elm. Um, I think. But, I don't think I used Mutt at university. I don't think it existed uh, when I was at uni. Um, I think I moved to that when I was running my own Linux machines, which would have been post-97 or so. Because while I was at uni, I still had Minix, because I only had a 286. <laughs> um, uh, so I think I, I... I don't think I ever ran Pine out in the world, so I don't think Alpine existed. Um, but yeah, I believe it's an open source clone of Pine or something. I, I don't know the detail. Popey says, yeah, I use an EG... Oh, so EGPU is the name of the thing. So, is the EGPU a type of GPU, or is it a box that, a G that any GPU you like goes in? It's just basically a box with a... I don't know which socket they use now. But what... Is it, like, PCI or something? I don't even know. Um, 
What 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 do um, graphics cards plug into the motherboard? But it's presumably not ISA anymore. So assume it's PCI for the sake of argument. Is the eGPU an actual GPU, or is it um, a box like an external disk caddy in which there is a PCI slot and into which you plug your um, GPU? Presumably that makes it super easy to cool if it's outside the machine, because you can just put a heatsink the size of the building on it rather than one that has to fit inside the laptop. Okay, anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, people who are here learning about Flatpak, minor diversion, but whatever. So, we need to try a couple of things here. First of all, we need to do Flatpak um, uh, remove org.cryogenics.peg. Yes. Okay. Uh, Popey says, I have a box of Razor Core in which there is a 1050 Ti. And Dan says, so my case is a Razor Core X. So... <laughs> The thing which does my head in about GPUs and also, honestly, about RAM is the way the names are so ridiculous. Um, I mean, I know, I know there's this whole kind of undercurrent of... Uh, I don't know what you call it. Um, ricers, basically. <laughs> um, people who are taking um, their uh, computers... And zhuzhing them up ridiculously with neon and like pointed edges and stuff like this. Uh, so it looks like a max power body kit. And you still get a lot of that gamer kind of vibe about things. But it always amazes me that um, uh, GPUs and RAM especially is all called ridiculous things like The Dominator or Vixen X or whatever. And it's not just called, you know, DDR RAM 3200. And it's just so annoying. <laughs> anyway. Uh... Pervy says, box has a PSU, USB, USB-C, and Ethernet ports, and room for one GPU. That's a... Oh, right, okay. Wow, how complicated is this? Now, hang on, I'm just going to get a drink. I'll be with you in one second. Oh, I need to walk. Broken. I'm broken into bits. Ah, fizzy water for me. Right. Brief glance at my kitchen there, but not a very exciting glance. So... The next question is this. What do I do? I can call it a night here, or I can try and work out how you publish this in a way that other people can try out for me. Also, check out I haven't broken the snap. Um, so, uh, what do you think, people? I'm interested in your opinions. I'm canvassing the chat's opinion, because that's what, that's what we big-time streamers do. Me and Critical Role, we ask the chat stuff. Um, would um, would you be interested in me carrying on and trying to work out how to publish things to Flat Hub? Or do you think I should call it a night and then come back and address this at another point? I've now been streaming for two and three quarter hours, plus the half hour I did at the beginning. Crikey. That seems like a lot, but whichever. Um, so, uh, I'm just going to go off in another window <laughs> to Snapcraft build uh, and I'm going to log into that and I'm going to tell it to rebuild which it probably has done actually I'm getting uh, um, because what I want to do is I want to install the snap um, but I don't really want to do that on screen the, um, the thing in here but so if I go and do pick color picker uh, builds. See, because I pushed new versions to Git, it's probably done the build for me. Oh, it hasn't, then. Okay. Thought it would have built. It's a bit disappointing, Snapcraft. Why haven't you done that, then? Okay. So, anyway, trigger a new build. So I have triggered a, well, I am triggering a new build of the snap. So when that builds, which will hopefully take, you know, 10 minutes or something to get to the front of the queue, we can take a look at that and uh, confirm that I haven't broken the snap with those changes, which hopefully I have not. Uh, right, what have you lot said? Uh, publish, <laughs> break all the thing. <laughs> well, I mean, I haven't broken the snap because um, 
it hasn't been released at all. Also, man, this is screwed. Look, check this out. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, you'll you'll like this. Why can't I? Yeah, check this out. Look, this is the this is the build. And look, you see, this is in progress twice. <laughs> Ah, oh, never change build.snapcraft.org, <laughs> build.snapcraft.com or .io or whatever you are. Right, anyway, so we'll leave that to build. Uh, and then I can um, I can run the Edge version. I can install the Edge version here, confirm that it works. If it works, then I'll promote it. Um, so there is a live version of PIC, so that will be encouraging. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, uh, the gang say, you all like that I should just publish this. You'll be in a QS page, it's not a stat, but you can immediately publish. Ah, right, so, I'm, so I've, I've got to apply for permission, have I? Okay, well, to be honest with you, that's not wholly unreasonable, um, he says, thinking, actually, no. Why, why shouldn't I be able to publish? Oh, I, uh, you see, so here's the thing about having multiple software stores. I, um, I know there are a lot of people out there who are kind of, oh, but Snap's only got one store, and that's because Canonical controls it, and it's all terrible, and what we want is loads and loads of Snap stores. And they have a point, right? They do. And I agree with that point to some extent. But equally, I feel like, and I haven't checked this, so I may be unf this may be a terrible calumny on the, uh, on the, on the Flower Hub people, but I suspect Popey is probably right that I'm going to go there and say, I'd like to publish on Flower They're going to go, no, you have to sit in a queue, and then you have to get reviewed like iOS rather than being able to publish software to my peeps like every other platform on Earth. Uh, but they will say... That's okay, though, because we're not reviewing you to get onto the platform. We're just reviewing you to get onto FlatHub. And what you should do, if you want to be able to publish immediately, is basically do your own app store. This is what this is obviously what the Flatpak repo thing is all about, which I didn't understand at all. So we're maybe going to have to come back to that. But anyway, um, incidentally, you will see here, um, in this random window, which I've used for this purpose and nothing else, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 tabs. So I've got 15 tabs, and I've been quite dutiful about closing them down. So this would explain why I currently have, in total, in across all my Firefox windows, uh, 561 tabs open. So <laughs> hopefully those of you who um, have heard of this statistic before or statistics like it and have complained now I have a sense of why it's like this anyway we can get rid of that 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 we can get rid of oh no we want to keep that because I want flower up we can get hey why does that work we didn't have to do the Cairo stuff what that means is Cairo is part of the get own platform the Pi Cairo binding Yes! I <laughs> dodged the bullet there. Massive bullet dodged. Um, to the point of, like, the last person who dodged bullets that big was Neo. That's excellent. Oh, wow, I'm really pleased with that. I didn't even, I forgot all about the fact that I was meant to check that. <laughs> okay. So, we don't need that anymore. 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 We don't need... Do I push these? See, I've got a Debian directory here, but I don't even know if it still works. The, the Debs, I mean, there's a bunch of people who are like, we want a Deb. And it's like, it's in the repository. I don't know if it works, but presumably some of you could just pick it up and use it. Anyone who wants a Deb rather than a Snap or a flat pack has got some kind of technical issue going on. And therefore, it's semi-incumbent upon you to at least glance at the repository and think about running it yourself out of the repository or building a Debian package or sending me a PR or whatever. Of course you don't have to. Um, and using an open source uh, package is in no way an indication that you're a developer prepared to hack on it. But I don't think you get to simultaneously be snobby about the packaging system with which it's delivered to you and also go, but I'm just a plain user who wants to be able to run stuff. Anyway rant over so oh yeah here are all my changes look which sweet ha <laughs> the app data five years ago did i even write it change the description so it's more detailed <laughs> okay <laughs> history last out of first i wrote it okay well done me um <laughs> that's excellent these people snap now rather than faffing with debs you see right 
So, we can get rid of that. Uh, this will eventually change. So, I, oh, where was that? Oh, well. Um, I saw on someone's page one of these nice buttons, but get it from FlatHub. But presumably, as I approach the how do I publish in FlatHub question, it will give me access to all of that kind of thing. Right, so this is, browse apps a lot. So, this is just FlatHub itself. Get involved. Publish your app under developers. Okay. Or oh, badges. Badges? We only know stinking badges. This guy, if anyone wants to publish a desktop app on Flab, probably intended for app authors. That's me. Thank you, Nick Richards. Do I know Nick Richards? Does anyone know Nick Richards? Not a link. Okay. Flab is a centralized repository of Flatpak apps. It finds a single point of entry. Well, a number of users. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the apps include. Yes. Open me up in the software center. I'm going to say the software center is the name that everyone's picked up for it. Um. Ah! Edge thing, go away! Let me click to deselect. A flyable for the means for. Yeah, okay, right, I know what a software center back end is. Um, or you can help with exposure for applications. Cool! I'll let you do that then. Thank you. Um. How many people are viewing this? There's like at least a couple of you because I recognise your names, but I don't know. Like, is anyone watching and not typing things into the chat? Are there like three of you? What? I don't think I can see that from here, and I don't really want to open it on my phone because then I'll get the world's worst like um, microphone feedback. I would have thought. Uh, also, hear my own voice is extremely disorienting. Right, who can use FlatHub? Primarily intended for use for developers who want to distribute desktop apps on Linux. Yes. Third party download, slash app. No mechanism to process payments for app publishers. In app purchases, subscriptions, or upgrades, we're going to provide the, the ORS metadata. I can't think of a reason why I need an app purchase. I like the idea, but not for this app. Like, maybe. Um, <laughs> Maybe I should make it so it takes a little picture of um, where you pick the thing up from, but then it hides it away from you unless you pay like a pound or something. Any other queries? No. How to submit app submissions are extremely welcome. I have you on my second. <laughs> Probably says six people watching. I have you on my second screen. Background noise. <laughs> That's man. I'm honoured. Thank you. I'm very pleased. How to submit an application? App submissions are extremely welcome. The process is straightforward. I'll be the judge of that, Flat Hub documentation. Before submitting an app for inclusion on Flat Hub, please follow the app requirements to ensure that it is technically and legally compatible with the Flat Hub service. Once this has been done, you submit the app for inclusion. Flat Hub is managed through a GitHub project, and app submissions take place as a request. Submit an app. It is! You fork the repository, and then put the manifest in. <laughs> Ah, so. Oh, I need to change that thing back. So, um, uh, yeah, I need to bin this. Yeah, don't do that. Okay, and don't do that either. Tell you what would be nice. Is if I had that stuff in there, which pulls in the local version for testing... And I could pass like dash dash do Stuart's test or I could do dash dash debug or something like that. And then it picks up the debug module. Huh. I wonder if I can do that. Um, right. For now, I'm just not going to bother. Fine. Um, uh... Um, remove debug pull in of local main That will do for that. Um, okay, so <sighs> now I'm thinking about that. I shouldn't be right. Um, so you honestly. The list of applications in Flat Hub is one massive GitHub repository. How's that going to work when there's a hundred thousand of them? 
Um, presumably their answer is then when we get 100,000 applications rather than, you know, 60, then we'll come up with a better way of doing it. Uh, until then, this enabled us to get going with almost zero effort. And they're not wrong. Um, okay, so... I wonder how many apps there are. I could work that out if I looked, I'm sure. Right. Follow the app requirements, and then app submission take place support requests. So you do that. Someone else has put my app on Flab, which they haven't. Oh, no. Getting help. Matrix. I'm not going to Matrix. Oh, Matrix or Discourse. Great. Um, what am I supposed to do? IRC? I'll just tweet at someone I know in Gnome. Rodrigo or someone. Um, be like, hey, you know, people who I know, help me out. Who knows about this? Like Sri or someone there. He's cool. Uh, right, okay. So, uh, so let's look at these app requirements first. We've got all these requirements to ensure the application is hosted on Flower for safety use, integrate well with the desktop experience. Good. This stuff is important. Um, if you have any further questions, please ask on Flower Pack Matrix. Fine, if I have to. All content hosted on Flab must allow legal distribution. The license must be correctly specified in the app's app data file. Ooh. MIT. There you go. Um, good. Application ID. Each application should have a unique application ID following the standing reverse DNS schema. Um, the application ID should be a real URL of a domain the app author has control over or where their app is hosted. Strictly, org.cryogenics.pick is not a thing. I have cryogenics.org. I don't have pick.cryogenics.org. I'm assuming everything doesn't need its own subdomain. What it cares about is this or the TLD or the um, TLD plus one. Uh, is it ETLD plus one? I can never remember the designation, but whatever. Um, I'm assuming that's okay. Uh, also, yeah, the dash thing. Oh, there's a question. Popey, you're in the in the in the chat now. So, um, pick. Uh, it creates a GTK application. This is a GTK question, which you're probably not going to know the answer to, and I'm not expecting you to, but maybe you do. Um, it's a GTK application. When it when you create a GTK application, you have to tell it what its name is. This used to be org.cryogenics.pick dash color dash picker. Nothing else uses this. I never reference it anywhere. So, uh, in the snap. So I don't think it matters that I've now changed it. But there will be people who have pick installed who get the update and its GTK application name will change. Is that likely to matter? I don't think it is. Um... I don't think anyone's using that. The thing I said earlier was that if you're Microsoft Word, you have to care about this because people have written scripts to uh, automate con use of your program or whatever. But um, uh, I don't think that's going to be the case for Pick because there aren't that many people. There aren't, you know, millions of people using it. There are only a few thousand people using it. So probably not a big problem. Um, and I've put a note in the uh, in the commit, so hopefully if someone runs into a problem, they notice it or they'll file a bug or something. So I think it's okay. But I had to rename it to this because you can't have dashes in a Flatpak name, Flatpak application ID, it turns out. Um, you can in the application ID, but they are deprecated. Popey says, don't think it does. Thank you. I appreciate this. McPhail, I wonder if Popey has already... <laughs> and he picked it unsnap. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to do a PR for <laughs> unsnap now once it's in Flathub. <laughs> That's a good idea. Right, application ID. Each application should have a unique application ID following the standard reverse DNS schema. I have done that, so shut up. I had to change things, but I've done it now. Repository layout. The manifest must be at the top level. And named after the application ID with the extension JSON, YAML, or YAML. Yes. All patch and data files required also go in the repository. I'm assuming that's what I've done. I built it according to, like, instructions. Flab only hosts stable application releases, not development snapshots. The manifest should therefore... Towards... No! I'll just build main. Well, it's not even main. It's um, head of the app branch. And when I push something to it, I'll just build it again. Oh, man. I have to care about release numbers. Oh, 
Oh god, I don't do any of that. Well, I've seen a bunch of stuff in Flathub, just dashing in the app, I need like JetBrain stuff. Um, the Flathub documentation says it's not allowed. Now, it... Observe, right? So here... Uh, what this says is... Um, you can use a hyphen, but it's problematic or not allowed in things like flatback application IDs. Um, and uh, hyphen is discouraged in your application identifiers. So I think this is one of those things where it probably works because they've grandfathered it in, but they're like, we really don't want you to do this, and we will perpetually whine at you until you stop doing it like an annoying four-year-old. <laughs> so whatever. But I changed it anyway. Hopefully it doesn't break anything. And it, honestly, this is a better name. The only reason it was called Pick Color Picker before was because um, snaps don't have the qualified name. It's ju there's just one big namespace. And I couldn't call Pick Pick because there's already a thing called Pick. Yeah, so, um, so yes, you say, that, yeah, so the, um, the flat pack application ID isn't supposed to have dashes in and maybe doesn't work. Um, uh, it might work, but it's certainly deprecated and they don't want you to do it. The GTK application name can have dashes in. The issue is that in a flat pack, if you are a GTK application and your GTK application name and your flat pack application name on a flat pack application ID are not the same, your app doesn't work. Um, because I ran into this problem earlier. That's why I changed it. I think this is guesswork. Thinking, attempting to think like a flat pack developer, um, you know, put oneself in the in the mind of the killer kind of approach. Um, Will Graying my way through flat pack application development. I believe this is because the flat pack sandbox or whatever it's called um, gives you access to Dbus based on your flat pack application ID. So if you try and open up a Dbus name that isn't your Flatback application ID, it denies you. So I could have, in theory, asked for Dbus access to org.cryogenics.pick-color-picker, but that would just be stupid. They should be the same. Um, I wanted to call the snap pick, but snap find pick. Oh, snap show pick. Info. Oh, is it? I think I may. Um, I think it's because there's actually a Debian package called it. Yes, the pick utility allows users to choose one option. And there was some kind of problem with me calling a snap either the same thing as a Debian package, or there used to be a snap called pick or something. Um, can't remember what it was. Doesn't matter. Anyway, I wasn't allowed to call it that, which is why the snap's called pick color picker, which is really annoying, especially since then you have to argue about how colors spelled. Now the snap. It's obviously spelled properly. But I can see how this would make people not be able to find it. And this is all really annoying. Anyway, doesn't matter. Side issue. So, where was I? Yeah, I have, do I have to care about application releases? That's going to be a sad day for mankind, isn't it? Um, external data check. I don't do any of that. Flatpak always built in the Flatpak branch name stable. Always passing. Application must be built against the SDK that is self hosted on Flathub. So Flatpak does the build. Flathub does the build. So it's like the Ubuntu build servers. Okay. Slightly unexpected. But that's okay. Well, I'm, I'm built on. Uh, I only need, you know, it's apparently got Cairo in it. Everyone's a winner. And. I'm on version 42, which is the most recently released version, so I think I'm good. Bundle dependencies, I haven't got any. Oh. There was one. I do that. In order to play a sound... Yeah, when I originally built Pick... Uh, well, that shows you how long ago it was, right? When I originally built PEC, um, there weren't, because I'm using the GI bindings like you're supposed to, uh, GI repository um, and GIR more generally. Um, 
when I first built PIC, there weren't GI bindings for G sound, the stuff that plays sounds. Uh, because this was pre Ubuntu 1604, which is going to show you how long ago it was. Um, but I want to play the, um, uh, what do you call it? The uh, camera snap sound. And so, what I do is I just shell out. Because I don't care if, I don't care if it fails. Camera GTK Play existed. Uh, it was easy to use it that way. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be. I don't care about the latency too much. So you know, if it took half a second to run, whatever. It gave you the sense of I've snapped that. It played the sound. Um, uh, Neil says, "Got to go pick my daughter up from work. See you in a bit if you're still streaming." Well, I don't know. It could be. <laughs> I don't even know how you do this. Do you just like keep going until everyone dies or what? I don't really understand it. Anyway, <laughs> where was I? Oh yeah. Um, this. So I shell out to play the sound. Um, the that I don't think is working in the flat pack version, but I, I have pulse audio permission, so I don't know whether it's because Canva GTK Play is not available or because it is available and I'm passing it a sound ID it doesn't know about or what. <laughs> um, so and if it doesn't be a real problem, since there presumably are GI bindings for G sound now. I could just use those and go. Sixteen oh four is now. Is it out of support? The snaps run on sixteen oh four. I think they might do. So I don't really want to. Bit. I mean, I could just pass anyway. Um, here's a question: How do I run something inside a flat pack? Do the equivalent of snapcraft shell or whatever it is where i can get a shell inside my snap so i can test things like does this exist uh flat pack shell flat pack run run an application or open a shell in a runtime oh, open a shell in a runtime cool flat pack help run yes i meant dash dash help right Core is 1604, core 18 is 1804. Yeah, 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 that's what I thought. Um, so, yeah, so um, I, I'll, 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 stick with, I'll stick with that. I mean, it says there that the GI bindings for GTAM require 1604 later, so it probably will be fine, but then I'll have to learn about it, and this works. But, here's the interesting question. If this doesn't exist in the flat pack build, which it probably doesn't, I, I no idea, um, then uh, maybe I'll just sack it off and do this properly. But, run time to use. So, is the app I run just bash? Do I just do flat pack run dash dash run time equals form bash? Invalid ID bash names must contain at least two periods. So, how do I run a shell then? Helpful. Run an application or open a shell in a runtime. So flat pack run. I'd like to open a shell in a runtime, please. If ref names a runtime. Oh, so I don't pass it as the runtime, I pass it as the thing I want to run. And then what it actually does is it goes, oh but that's a runtime. And opens a shell in it. Uh, 42, please. <laughs> nice. Okay. Understood. Um, oh, what do you think? Oh, GST play. Wonder what that does. Does that exist in the real world? 
Where is the sound? Is it in data? No. <laughs> Be nice. Wow, everyone hates my terminal bell. It's the best, <laughs> right? It gets my attention. Bing, like that, definitely. So I think then I'm doing something a bit naughty here then and going, I know what I'll do. I'll just use a sound called camera, which is on the system rather than shipping it as part of the business. We're going to snap either. Um, play sound, play spun. Dialogue information. Camera shutter, yeah. <laughs> I'm just playing it by name. I'm so cool. Right. <laughs> um, camera GTK Play plays a sound identifier. So the problem is, if I do, if I use GST Play, it's there in this flat pack runtime. But I'm not shipping the sound. And I don't think I can just rob it, because I bet it's GPL. And which, like, I don't know, GPL in my app. I wonder where it is. <laughs> uh, so, camera GTK play, dash dash ID, camera shutter. Okay, cool, that works. So now if I asterisk it. Uh, uh, right, user share sounds free desktop stereo. It's an OGA file, so wallop. Why? Oh, because we've got two slashes in. Fine, don't send a report. Sound theme free desktop. Uh, uh, where would it be? Um, okay, what's in here? Copyright. Oh, man. CC by. Oh, it's from Freesound, is it really? That's pretty cool. Horst Horstensen. <laughs> nice. What? Oh, it's Freesound down. Act, uh, pass it, create comma zero version one by stating CC0-1.0 metadata license. Okay, let's check that. Uh, CC0-1.0, good. In update guidelines, find tips, math, practice, get up to, up to spec. Now, I checked this earlier and the quality of it was it passed the test. Is this, so that gets fixed up in the build. So that's okay. I don't want to break that. Uh, honestly, I don't think the snap actually uses it. Um, but I might as well have the, um, I might as well have my flat pack build actually correct all pick dash color dash pick and snap stuff into all dog hygienics dot picks. That's fine. Uh, we link to a screenshot. Is that still there? <laughs> Hopefully the answer is yes. It is. Excellent. Um, and updated guidelines, so we'll have a shifty at that. Um, the home page is correct. Update contact. Oh, with, without an at in. <laughs> okay. What if that work? Uh, updated guidelines. These aren't necessarily requirements. Use modified app stream. You okay? Fine. So we can do that. Yeah, 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 I can check that it works. Oops. Let's install that. Uh, yep. Go ahead. Proceed. Mm. 
Gun. Oh, it's not called that, it's called Pick. Picker.appstream.xml. Well, what's it? Oh, app data. That's why. App data.xml. Failed. Ooh, we need a release number and a content rating. Okay, path and file name. Place the app share meta info. The old path is app share app data. You need to make the work bonus points if you do. I'm putting it in app share meta info, aren't I? I think I'm already doing that. Uh, where is it? Um, app share meta info. And yes, app share meta info. All the quantity to pick dot app data dot XML. And I said pick color pick it into being all dot quantity to pick. So that works. Uh, done that. Name it id.metainfo.xml. I name it id.appdata.xml. Oh, is that what the rename thing was complaining about? Earlier, when I did the installations, it bitches and renames a thing it says i'm renaming something and i was like why did you do that but i didn't notice that maybe it renamed the the extension uh pressing for get re it's not there renaming all dot quad links to pick up data export to share app data all dot cryogenics. What? So the old path is that. This says it's renaming my correct file to share app data, which is the old path. And it seems to be happy with the fact that it's called app data. And this thing where it's called meta info doesn't seem to be right. When was this last edited? 4th of February, 25 revisions. Do I need to find, use meta info instead of app data? 28th of November 2019. Well, that's not helpful. I want to see a diff. Maybe it didn't show me a diff. Right. I updated the updated guidelines in Markdown. So, don't know who you are. You've changed this to say that, but the documentation doesn't say that. So, we make a note and then perhaps file a bug later. I have to say, this has been a commendably easy to follow process so far. I was expecting it to be terribly convoluted and annoying and full of half-written, half-finished, out-of-date documentation which recommended a bunch of stuff, but maybe I've just been... Um, What's the opposite of spoiled? Well, spoiled. <laughs> um, uh, destroyed by working with um, the Snap Team or Shades of the Ubuntu SDK in the old days where the docs were never up to date. This seems to be great. Um, oh, we have coffee in the back. Welcome back. Um, yeah, we have um, the flat pack builds and runs. It's all good. Uh, I'm trying to work out how to publish it to Flat Hub now. Or well, I'm reading about publishing it to Flat Hub anyway. Uh, Except I've just run into a weird thing here. So, um, suggest that the app data file should be called, be called app share meta info id dot meta info dot xml. But, but. But this page here, uh, building your first flat pack, where do I create the thing? 
no, the app data file. Oh, I didn't mention it there. Um, so it's got to be in building then. Requirements and conventions. Adam Grubbs, good evening, folks. Hello, Adam. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the show that never ends. <laughs> um, uh, we are, no, when I say we, I mean I, with a certain amount of um, help and uh, enjoyment from all of you there in the chat. Um, I am taking my uh, application, which is Pick, which is a colour picker, and attempting to package it as a fat pack, which I have successfully done. Can you believe it? So it now I can now build a flat pack and it runs on my machine. And I'm now trying to work out how to go about publishing it on Flower Hub so other people can enjoy it too. Um, so, so far, I have to say, not bad progress. More than I was expecting. Uh, app data files. Right. This page here specifically disagrees with that. So... The wiki says they should be called App Share Meta Info. <laughs> the hell is wrong with Edge's copy thing? Popey, you use Edge, right? When I select things, it pops up that weird little box, look like this. And then if I, you see, this is the worst. And if I click here, which should deselect things, it doesn't. And I can't work out how to make it unselect stuff. Unless I right click and then I get to click, right? The little hovering box, how do I make it go away? Adam Gubbs, I made a couple of snaps. How does the Flatback creation process compare? Um, I have to say, so far, Flatback has been very easy. I've been very impressed with it. Uh, the snap process, um, God's honest truth, I didn't do the initial work. Um, there's so all the applications that I've released. So there's Pick, uh, there's Hushboard, uh, there's UTM No. Um, all of them, the snaps are um, uh, were originally built. The um, the snap snapcraft.yaml file, which creates the the snap, were originally built either by uh, Alan Pope of this parish. <laughs> or Martin Wimpress, um, both of whom have been very helpful to me and said, here's the thing. Now, once that's set up, um, I'm, able, I, I'm perfectly capable of uh, making any alterations to it I need to, and I tend not to do the building myself because I've set up build.snapcraft.io to do builds when I push stuff to GitHub. So, um, I didn't do the snap stuff, so I don't necessarily know how hard it is, but I have gone from zero to hero with this flat pack thing, in the, in the course of this stream, never built a flat pack, didn't even have it installed, to I have now built a flat pack and it works. Super easy, which is great. And I'm pretty pleased with it. So, Adam, I have to say, two thumbs up thus far. Um, I don't know what the publishing to Flat Hub is going to be like, and I don't know whether my flat pack is actually any good. But so far, this is great. Um, uh, Alan Pope, I did pick... Wimpy did the magnifier thing. Yes, so Magnus. I forgot about Magnus. Um, so Magnus is um, a small application. Well, I should be able to go to cryogenics.org slash. Is it code Magnus? I could probably code Magnus. Yes, simple desktop magnifier for a bunch of other Linux OSs. This is because um, those of you who've seen Pick will know that um, you can. Uh, it, 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 when you're picking a colour, it replaces your cursor with a magnifying glass, so you can zoom in on the bit of the screen you want to pick the colour from it. And Martin said, hey, you've got the code which does that. Could you just make a desktop magnifier application, please? Um, because we need one for Marte, for accessibility reasons. And I said, sure, no problem. And basically yanked the magnifier code out and just did it in a window, rather than all the weird stuff that Pick does to use, it, or use the cursor with it. That was great. Bosh, done. Um... And it's now a stock part of Marte, Ubuntu Marte, which I'm terribly proud of. <laughs> um, um, and yes, so uh, so Martin did the Snapcraft, uh, initial Snapcraft build for that. Um, what's interesting about Magnus is it seems to have two diff completely different classes of users. The first one is um, uh, people using it for accessibility purposes. They want to be able to zoom in on a particular bit of their window, which you used to be able to do with Compiz. Um, you can just zoom in. You can just like hold um, 
super and the mouse wheel or something and you could zoom in and out. I don't know if you can still do that. and I don't really want to do it on a stream. But uh, the second class of people um, who are using Magnus are um, desktop application and icon designers who use it to do things like zoom in on the rounded corners of windows to check that they're okay. <laughs> Which I thought was really nice. <laughs> Completely unexpected use of things. Anyway. Where the hell was I? Oh, there's more stuff written. Um, yes, Popey, you are superb. Um, I very much appreciate the fact that you did that. So, Adam, Flatpak, this has been dead easy. I just understood this. The, the documentation has been pretty clear. I mean, fine, I have a page of notes of questions that I need to ask people uh, or understand uh, about Flatpak or about the Flatpak packaging process or about things that didn't seem to work. But this is basically good. So that's really handy. Um, Adam says, that right-click thing in Edge drove me nuts and I just couldn't deal. Uh, yeah. Popey says, the right-click context menu in Edge, I turned that off completely. So, yeah, no, not that one. The, this is the select menu. I select like this. And I get this little stupid little pop-up thing here. Right, but what I want now is, I hate having just random text selected. I hate it. So, I always click somewhere else to deselect that text. But, if that little thingy is on the screen and I click somewhere else, it doesn't seem to go away. Look, it just brings the damn thing back. Ah, oh, that's interesting. No, 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 no. It's not me. It's If I just click, it moves that little box. So, what I have to do is select, wait for it to vanish, and then click, and then it does it. That's really annoying. I wonder if I can just make that go away. Hide menu. Hide menu always. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, stupid pop-up. Problem solved. Okay. <laughs> right. Sorry, a diversions. Uh, yes, choose hide menu always. Yes. <laughs> um, I, have, I have worked it out. Thank you. Uh, what was I even talking about? Let me explain. What the hell is wrong with you using Edge? Right. First of all, Edge, not a bad browser. Um, open source, runs on Linux. I sh we should support this kind of thing, right? It runs on Ubuntu. We want big companies to build stuff for our desktop, right? And they have done this. Secondly, my main browser is Firefox. Um, but Firefox, my, my Firefox setup has loads of things in it that I don't particularly want on a stream. Right, a um, bunch of my bookmarks and stuff like that. I don't particularly want to do a search and then have it show in the search results a bunch of pages that I've been to because that's none of your business. <laughs> so I wanted a different browser. Um, now I have uh, I have Chrome installed. I have um, Firefox installed. I have Edge installed. I don't think I've got Brave installed on this machine anymore. I've got it on my phone. Um, so picked Edge because it's all right. Popey uses it, so um, I know it's reasonable. It's fine. I mean, I had to go through and turn off all the stuff on the um, on the new tab page. Um, and now I get a nice picture because I installed uh, this um, Chrome extension called tab.pix, which just replaces the new tab page with just nice pictures taken from, like, uh, Reddit or something, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, where's... Can I find out where that is? Extension options. So I can pick um, photos from various subreddits. I don't know how, how do I find where I got it from. Tab.pix. Viewing Chrome Web Store. Yeah. So it's it's just called Tab.pix. It's in the Chrome Web Store. It's cool. Um, yeah, in theory, Firefox has profiles, but I don't like using profiles because, well, th this is rank superstition but in the old days if you went to the profile manager once from then on every time you did anything at all with firefox for any reason it'd be like which profile do you want to use you sure you want to use that one uh -huh. and then you ended up digging around in um dot mozilla slash profiles slash some random number dot default to change anything and it just drove me crazy so i don't like the profile manager maybe it's got better these days but you know you had a chance firefox and you blew it with profiles the only thing which is worse with profiles than um uh than firefox is chrome <laughs> which is even worse so my policy is there are a bunch of good open source 
Linux native browsers run on my Ubuntu system. So if I want to isolate one thing from another, I'll just use a different browser. <laughs> it's just loads easier. Anyway. What was I even talking about? Uh, oh, yeah, I was uh, documenting this, wasn't I? Uh, this claims... Uh, claims they should be called... Dollar ID updates.xml. These two claims are inconsistent. So I will file a bug about that. That's so far the first time I've run into something which seems to disagree. That's the sort of this this is honestly the sort of error I expect from open source project documentation. It's something where some either you've got two groups of people who disagree on what a thing should be or uh, you've got something where they've changed it but they didn't find all of the places where it needed to be changed and update it um, which honestly is the difference between having a professional technical writer who owns the documentation and a bunch of people who keep it up to date when they get a chance because they're mostly programmers which I don't particularly blame anyone for technical writing is hard um, and keeping up to date with all the places where you need to update something is double extra hard. I mean, you know, having a professional paid technical writer on staff by no means means that you can actually do it. I invite you to have a poke around at MSDN or, you know, the Apple documentation or something. It's just hard stuff. So no, no real blame for that sort of thing. It would just be cool if they agreed. So I will file a bug and then they can fix it. Right. What was I doing? What was I looking at a shell for? Oh, for the sound thing. Yeah, don't care. Right. So I did this, and it complained. I did a content rating. odrs.gnome.org slash ors. It meant something mentioned ors before. What is it? Usually, usually it'll get up to iOS. Open age rating service. Do you know what the all sex mode required for the app data file? Oh, this is like the BBFC ratings, but for software. Cool. Okay. Generate data. By answering all the questions, generate upstream compatible marker for the upstream app data file. Uh, what type of component are you generating network for? It is an application that does not use the internet. Uh, also, there's multiple versions. The newer versions. What version? Um, Gnome Software 3. Point, fine, we'll use that since I'm doing it like a brand. This is 2015 anyway. You see, that needs updating. <laughs> Let's get started. Uh, cartoon violence. None fantasy violence. None realistic violence. None bloodshed. None sexual violence. None desecration. None human slavery. None. Alcohol, none. Narcotics, none. Tobacco. Oh, actually, actually thinking about it, the snark mode, does it have any... Yeah, I'm not Irish, but I've got quite a bit of scotch in me. Liquid NyQuil. Yeah, okay, so... Uh, do you think that counts? These are... So, uh, so, so you understand, um, uh, when you unpick, do I... Do I still have it installed? No, I don't. <laughs> so when you unpick, um, it, uh, it it lets you pick a place on the screen, and it remember it shows you the color, it remembers where you got it from, and it tells you a name for the color as well as shows you its the color definition in a bunch of different formats. Um, but the names are all quite sensible, nice names. So here. Oh, they're in dot colours. Yeah, okay. So here are the names. So they're all like Aqua Deep, English Holly, and Pigment Indigo and stuff like that. The names come from there. Uh, pretty cool name set, no problem. There's Ubuntu Orange, and then when... Well, there, there's Ubuntu Orange, and they changed it. This is uh, DD4814. Um, is there one called Murder Scene? Popey's just mentioned. Uh, Neil's back. Hello. Um, 
so the snark set uh these are from um name that color by um adrian porterfelt and so on um and these are just amusing they do not come up by default you have to deliberately run the app with dash dash snark to get the colors but i thought they were funny set them all to references rather than use oh hello danny um liquid benadryl yeah okay cool that's fair midlife midlife crisis porsche <laughs> and there's one in here about becky's flesh colored tights or something which just made me laugh new tights that only match becky's skin there they are <laughs> there it is right um so yeah okay so oh mild or moderate well i'll put mild uh what was that line 30 set murder scene blimey what colors once now color for meeting summertime crimes well <laughs> um then this the killing or wounding of people is mentioning the words murder scene in association with a red color does that count as bloodshed I'm going to say no. But this references alcoholic beverages and illicit drugs. Yes, this is this doesn't say references. Cartoon violence or whatever. This is unrealistic or realistic bloodshed and it's I'm I'm going to declare that's okay. Nudity, but a state of undress. Nudity likely to cause offence. So no, there isn't any actual nudity. It mentions the words nudity, but that's not the same thing. Uh, I don't think there are any sexual acts described in the snark list. Lady pink costs twenty percent more. <laughs> um, uh, nope, can't see anything in there. Um, language. Any actual swear words? Um, it's poopy a swear word. Kiss me, I'm pretending to be Irish. <laughs> Seriously, this list cracks me up. That's why I put it in. Oh, piss. There you go. Okay, fine. Um, uh, it's piss of profanity, I think. Um, I think technically it's vulgar rather than profane, but whatever. That's not what I mean. Um, Defined as the quality of being amusing. For example, this would include in-app jokes. Loads. I've got loads of jokes. <laughs> it's like entirely full of jokes. Like a whole file. It's just jokes. The whole thing. Slapstick, vulgar, or... How is... Oh, so this, th so this increasing scale is not increasing funniness. It's increasing edginess. Uh... Uh, intense, mature, or sexual humour. I don't think there's any sexual humour. Vulgar or bathroom humour, yes. Uh, discrimination. Uh, no, I'm pretty confident there isn't any of that, yes. Okay, advertising, none. Gambling, none. In-app purchases, none. Follow Mark and Pacing existing application. App data file. Thank you, Richard Hughes. That is very decent of you. Okay, Bosch content rating done. So we should now be able to uh, check that again. Right, and now it's complaining about release not being present. Fine, but that's this is an improvement. So, um. Data files. What data files should start with that? Or oh, copyright. But do I really need to put a year in? The copyright is only listed to public validate strict. But if I put a year in, it means I've got to update it every year. I'll spell my own name. Uh, 
sorted and validate string. Tag missing, translation not specified. Release is required. Translations required. Name summary and description. There's no translations. Oh man. I hadn't thought about translations at all. That's going to be really annoying. Translating all the colour names is going to be hell on legs. Okay, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, using the type equals desktop, whereas the correct new type is desktop application. Go to run it through AppStream Util Upgrade. Okay. Oh man, he's written loads of stuff on the end. Um, developer name. Not using the company name because it's not a company product. Cryogenics Consulting's name is nowhere upon this product. Where to report bugs for the application? This is a GitHub URL. So uh, let's go and have a look at where that is. Uh, I could probably just pick that off the top of my head, couldn't I? Should know that, but whatever. Where to donate to the application? Uh, code well, this sort table, and then in the bottom of this somewhere, there's a PayPal URL. Hey, why haven't I got a... Yeah, no. Haven't I got a paypal.me URL somewhere? I wonder what it is. <laughs> is it that? Yes! Ha! <laughs> Sweet! Okay. That works. You want to donate me some money? Send it there. Okay. Where on the internet users can find help? <laughs> I don't know, Twitter. Um, <laughs> where can users find help? I mean... Looks like you sell sponsors on the GitHub project. Oh yeah, probably. Um, I mean, I don't care about that. <laughs> oh, it's supposed to be yeah, PayPal.me slash Stuart Language. Excellent. Um, no one's ever used it. I don't even know if it works. It's just you know whatever, but it's in there. Um, I suppose the help URL is. I'll just put the home page in. Actually, no, I'm not going to put anything in there because there's not any specific help on the home page. Where to submit translations? <sighs> okay, going to have to cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, Adam says, I gave Kubuntu 2204 a spin earlier today. A bit of a bum on the Wayland session. It's a bit broken on NVIDIA. <laughs> Popey is a thousand percent whatever about Wayland. Um, since I am currently working on an application uh, which flat out requires X and not only does not work in Wayland, I think possibly it can't work in Wayland, I am also not bothered. Right, uh, let's validate that again. Right, it needs a release tag, which we're going to get to. Maybe not this evening. The ID should be the same as the application ID. Which, right, it isn't in this version, but it is in the version which get it, because it, we spatchcock the correct application ID into it when we do the installation. Right. Wrong, 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 wrong. You're all wrong, wrong. <laughs> okay. Outstream provides translation information. Software sense. Right. Mozilla XPI or Google Pack files for translation. Get text the hell does any of that mean? Well, I don't know what any of that means. Right. 
come back to that. Basically describes how to launch this software. Do I need this launchable thing? Ah, uh, now if I add that, then it's going to have to say org.cryogenics.pec.desktop, and that's going to be wrong in the updated.xml that I've got here. And I don't know whether the snap uses it. Oh, I'm not doing that. It doesn't, the, the checker doesn't say I need it. Provides. Oh, if I rename the app. Yeah, okay, that's nice. Hey, snap people, here's an idea. Why not make it so I can rename my application without throwing away all of my users? Check it out. Look, provide. That doesn't seem that hard, does it? No, it doesn't. No. Why don't you do that? Let's see if the CTO cares. <laughs> Icons and categories. Don't sit in the app. To right, they're in. Oh, no, hang on. Does this mean that if I don't have this, oh no, actually, I said it. Don't I? So if I just put that in. then presumably the said will fix both of them up. Uh, but do I need the G on the end for that? I think it is possible that I do. So let's go and have a check. Uh, that's where we do it. Whack. And it fixes up. Oh no, it fixes up both of them. Cool, so said doesn't need the G. So that's good then. So now we have that desktop thing. Uh, which hopefully means that down here, where it says icons and categories, it'll pick it up from the desktop file. Sweet. Done the ORS thing. Excellent. Uh, okay. Content. The actual content, sc description, screenshot, see the app stream docs. Well, I have that, I believe. Uh, that's what this is. Got the screenshot. Icons get picked up from the desktop file now. One snap has been built. Yeah, sweet. So let's validate it again. Apart from that, it hasn't got a release tag, which this doesn't mention at all. Our app requirements app stream. This doesn't mention the word release. Oh, okay. Fine, but its requirement is you have to pass this. <laughs> um, and this means it needs a release so I need to read well we'll come back to that in a second so we need a desktop file we've got it 64 by 64 128 by 128 and I think I've got those no I've got, f I've got a 512 icon but I don't have. I, mean, I could make them. Haven't I got a script somewhere? Which because what I've got is the big one, and then it makes the smaller icons from it. I think I've got a script somewhere that does it. Uh, not that. I thought I had something called make icons. And I traditionally do. Historically, at least. Uh, I, If I need to generate a bunch of icons of different sizes, I write a little noddy script to do it. But it doesn't appear in this particular case that I did that, which means that I'm just going to have to create them. Uh, so I'm reasonably sure that one is the 512 one. So uh, data icons 512. They are the same. Good. I thought as much. 
So, I should be able to do convert on them, I would have thought. Um, what sizes do I need? I need... 64 and 128. Scale of SVGs. I only have a PNG. Sam didn't give me the SVG for it. Um, so... Uh, 64, 1 to 8, do MKDR data icons. Uh, F by dollar F. I want MKDR dash P. Uh, convert, uh, pick, color picker dot PNG dash resize. Dollar F by dollar F data icons, blah 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 blah. Uh, pick color picker dot PNG. Data icons one twenty eight, and there it is. Not great, is it? Um, that's nice and sharp. What's the sixty four one like? That doesn't look too bad. It's the 32 one just fine as well. Yeah. Hmm. <coughs> uh, image magic resize algorithm. Yeah, what I want to do is whatever use the good one is resize quality. It's done not using lossy things. Well, that was a dash work command and scale parameter. Image quality is pretty bad. Resize or thumbnail is bad. You can use any filters you like. Density 400, but that's a PDF. Screw it. It's going to have to do. Right. Okay. So, now I need to do this for... Uh, 128 by 128. And I need to do it for... by 64. Okay, good. Oh, Popey suggests I use convert dash dash scale. This says don't use dash dash scale, use res scale is quick and resize is better. According to quality goes this way up. Thumbnail, scale, resize. Okay. I mean, I didn't know about scale at all. I've just always used resize. Um, <laughs> but it'll be fine for now. Um, uh, oh blimey, you lot have written loads. Sorry, I've been paying no attention at all while I was looking at um, app stream stuff. So what have you got here? There's a lot to like with Flatpak. Danny says, if it was like a regression, I'm pretty disillusioned with Linux right now. I understand that, pal. Neil, I really do. Um, this, um, the idea of spending four hours looking into a camera and fiddling about with some Linux software. This is the first time I've done this for a little while. I'm attempting to, to some extent, uh, regain my mojo on this because I have increasingly found that, uh, I mean, fine, I'm still using my Linux machine. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with um, my desktop. I uh, the other ones that I have to do, I mean, I've got a Mac there and one over there. Um, I've got Windows machines. Um, I still find myself 
preferring the desktop that I have, but I have certainly changed from someone who evangelizes it to someone who just uses it and shuts up. I'm just not interested in getting involved in discussions about this sort of thing anymore because half of the community are asses. It's just so depressing. Um, I, mean, I sound like such a bad girl. It's so depressing, yeah. Um, but, no, it's like a total rager, yeah. But it really is. It really is just sad that you can't have a discussion, especially um, because I'm an Ubuntu user, like, you know, almost everyone who's using this stuff. But there's just this constant roar of negativity. And then just when you want to go, no, look, things are good, Canonical do something stupid or um, wrong or <laughs> boneheaded and then you find yourself in a position where you're like I can't even defend it you know um, you've got a whole bunch of people going oh Ubuntu's all terrible and they and they, and they uh, don't contribute enough upstream or they um, they ship spyware you're like for god's sake stop having fights from 10 years ago and then just as you're on the cusp of going no look please just get over it Right? Most people who are using Linux are using Ubuntu. Why not try and support the most people? Then Canonical go, hey, here's this 38-page PDF you have to fill out to get a job with us after you've done a PhD. And they get mocked on Hacker News. And you're like, well, I can't defend them. And it's just, no, I just don't want to be part of the community. It's just so annoying. So this is a bit of an attempt to... Uh, attempt to be a bit less disillusioned by doing something which... Some people have asked for. I mentioned right at the beginning of this stream, um, which people probably didn't pick up on because I'm not sure there was anyone watching. Plus, I think that might have been on the stream where it died because there was no <laughs> video. <laughs> but uh, the of the people who requested a flat pack version of Pick, about half of them have said, "Hey, we'd like a flat pack version, please," and that's got a bunch of thumbs up in GitHub, and that's nice. Um, but then the others seem to be. I don't be saying we want flat pack because that's what we need. Their their pitch is you should do flat pack because snaps are rubbish. And literally every time someone says you should do snap, you should do flat pack because snap D is bad and people won't use it, I think I'm gonna wait another month before I do this thing for you now. Because you're making it worse. You're just injecting annoyance and sadness and division into the process. And it doesn't make me go, I want to take a side. It makes me go, I just don't want to talk to any of you. Right? It's really frustrating. So, that came up. But part of the goal with doing this flatback thing is to get a sense of what's it like. People want the software. They want to be able to use it. I should try and help them out if I can. Um, and I thought maybe it might be fun. And it kind of has been. This, this has been... Interesting. And to be honest with you, um, I think Danny said earlier that uh, the, that building a flat pack is a long, complicated thing. Um, and you can tell that from the length of this stream. But honestly, I've made quite a meal of this by because I'm trying to understand it in detail. I'm not trying to get it done as soon as possible, where I'd have probably been done in about three quarters of an hour. Nothing I've done here has been hard. The most challenging thing I ran into is that I'm not using the same GTK application name as I am Flatpak application ID, and that broke things. And what that took was, um, you know, a bit of deep thinking, kind of galaxy brain thinking about why it might happen, and then I fixed it. I can see how someone who wasn't me would have been baffled by that, but someone who wasn't me would have written a new application and would have just made it all org.cryogenics.pick all the way through. So, anyway. Um... Yeah, Poby says, I uh, said the Flat Hat project hasn't been paying developer advocates for five years to improve the onboarding process and docs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do like the ability of the end user to arbitrarily do overrides on the permissions. Um, that sounds good, Danny, I think. That's all. Um, Alan, uh, did I do it for Magnus for the Deb? Uh, I didn't build the Deb for Magnus at all, so that's got to have been Wimpress. I didn't do it. Um, last time I built a Deb was when the thing which went with quickly could build them. That was brilliant. You could just point it at a Python application and it would go, okay, and build a deb. And it was great. And that was the last time I cared about debs. Um, 
In the snap, uh, Danny says, in the snap world, you're stuck with whatever the snap request is granted in the store. If the snap has an anticipated, you might want a particular plug, then you're stuffed. Yes, I think that's stupid. The idea of, right, now I understand what you meant about the end user to arbitrarily override on the permissions. Yes, if I, pub, so, snap team, if you're listening to this, because I know, like, there are people out there, like the CTO cares and all this, right? Um, if I forget to ask for removable device permission when I build my snap, then no one can have it use USB stuff. There is literally no reason why I should have to ask that permission on the snap before you can have it as a user. If you want to go, I want to put this thing, I want to allow it to save files on my USB stick, then just let it. <laughs> right? The user should be able to go and turn that on. I think the idea that snaps have to apply for that permission, otherwise you just can't get it, is ridiculous. I, I can't remember what it was. There was some snap I was using. And I, I was trying to get it to read an MP3. I think it might have been Audacity if it was snapped or something like that. Um, I don't think it was Audacity. It might have been Audacity. Whatever it was. I was trying to get it to read an MP3 off of a USB stick. And it wouldn't read it. Could not work out why. And eventually, I moaned at Popey. And he went, has it got removable device permission? And I said, no, I'll turn that on. Couldn't turn it on because the snap author hadn't asked for it. So I had to go back to the person who built the snap and say, could you give it this permission so I can read an MP3 off of my USB stick, please? Meanwhile, I'll copy it to my home directory and read it from there. This is no security. It's just, it's infuriating. Fine. Make it so it's off by default or something if you want. No, so the user has to turn it on, but the user should be able to turn it on. Maybe not all permissions should be like that. I don't think you should be able to turn on the I can install other snap permission unless the snap asked for it and had it approved. But things like removable device stuff, there's no reason why a snap author who might have forgotten to do that should be required to do it before a user can. Uh... Neil says, Image Magic and FFmpeg need the good one flags. I mean, I agree with you. I'm sure Image Magic um, probably could have a dash dash do it properly flag added. FFmpeg, I don't know what the good one flag would do. Like, there's the, the whole point of the FFmpeg project is you have to know what you're doing because they don't want to make a value. It's like Calibre, right? The ebook thing. The authors. The developers don't want to make a value judgment about what's good. They just want to go, here is a box full of extremely sharp, dangerous tools. Do it yourself. Uh, Pobie says, someone's making a graphical app to do this. <laughs> yeah, well, unfortunately, they haven't. if I really wasn't satisfied with the resizing of Image Magic, then I'd just open it in the GIMP and uh, resize it there where it uses Langsos. And that would be fine. I just couldn't be bothered. Um... Uh, Rick B says, I don't think I've used vanilla Ubuntu in over a decade. Only the flavors have gone off on a customization mission. Okay. Um, I mean, that's cool. The whole point of the flavors existing, the whole point of non Ubuntu distributions existing is that people can use them. That's great. But most people using Linux are using Ubuntu and it's stock Ubuntu they're using. Right? I mean, and maybe that's the gateway drug that people who get invested in. The Ubuntu desktop or in the Linux desktop more generally, then use it as a springboard to move on to whether that's Ubuntu Mate or whether they decide to go look at Fedora, they look at Nix OS or they build their own thing or whatever it is they do. That's fine. Um, then, okay, you know, great. Use it as a springboard, get out there. But most people, like the huge, vast majority, of people using Linux are using stock Ubuntu, and therefore stock Ubuntu is the uh, the experience that should be optimised for. Oh, I got a hug from Neil. Thank you. Oh, from a couple of you actually. I still owe you a beer. Okay, fine. Um, well, next time we're in the same place, I'll buy you a beer. No worries. Um, I don't know. Foss Talk Live. Is there a Foss Talk Live this year? Maybe there is. Maybe there isn't. I don't know. I don't think there's one this year. Is there one next year? Someone asked Joe. Uh. I think the plan was originally to have a pop-up like Android to ask you. Oh, for snaps. Yes. So, um, I believe Flatpaks have a thing called portals, which, um, so I wondered about this earlier. This is um, early on in the first stream, I think, where uh, I couldn't work out why when you popped up a, um, 
uh, the, the Markdown editor thing I installed, when you tried to save something, it seemed to like have access to my whole home directory. But I think the save dialog is owned by Flatpak, not by the individual Flatpak I'm running. And then when you pick something, it temporarily grants you enough permission to do that thing, but not the rest of it. So this is like access to your photos is on iOS, where you say add a photo, uh, and it then pops up a photo picker, but the photo picker is owned by iOS. And then when you pick a photo, the application then gets access to that photo, but not all of your photos. And that's quite a good idea. Um, and yeah, snaps should do the same thing. This application wants, yeah. So when you try and use the webcam or try and write to... Um, uh, uh, removable storage, USB stick, or whatever, it should pop up a thing which says, This application wants to do this. Do you want to allow it? Yes, I want to allow it. Yo, yes, this time. Yes, always. No. And yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, you, you want to be a bit careful about the pop ups thing. You may remember that um, Android used to ask you about everything the whole time, and eventually they smashed all that down the permissions because it's just infuriating because crap applications hassle you all the time for it but nonetheless yeah something like that or i mean i wouldn't even mind if it showed you somewhere you know i mean instead of giving you direct access to fiddle with it what it did was it showed you a, a pop-over notification you know and um, one of the ones in the top right hand corner that merco designed when you can't click on them or anything um and then what you do is you go into uh, the software center and you find the permissions and you tweak them. That, like you, like you need to do at the moment, but it allows it for things like removable, uh, writing to removable devices. Anyway, blimey. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not making much progress with um, getting this into flower, am I? Um, but this is fun, just like chatting to people. <laughs> or chatting to myself and you listening. Uh, no Fast Talk Live this year, maybe next year. Yeah, that's what I thought, to be honest. It's a shame, because it's a good laugh, but I get why there isn't. Um, happen next time. So, I need to know what release is, and I think it's going to be a release number, and it's going to mean I have to start giving a damn about release numbers. Um, this doesn't mention release, does it? Is it like an all-in AppStream API reference? AppStream's public API. AppStream generator. Just give me a list of all the XML tags. Give me application upstream maintainers. That's me. Releases. Pants. <laughs> Okay. Uh, suggested metadata file contents may include the North Street required to be present according to the AppStream thing. They are quite required to be present according to Flat Hub. The application meta info may include one releases tag and one or multiple. Uh. All right. So this is the. Well, I mean, filling in a change log is going to be fine. Because I'm literally just going to make it say, bugs fixed. Just like everyone does on, on iOS or Android or whatever. Like, um, bugs fixed and software changed or whatever. Just like Telegram does. <laughs> the releases tag contains release child tags. Described to metri Each release of the software component should have a release tag described in it. At least one release child is present for the current release of the software. Should be sorted in the latest to oldest order. A release tag can have the properties version, date and timestamp. I feel like I could just auto build this out of git logs. <laughs> I don't think I need to write this and then care about it. If I invent a version number which is date dot github revision, they don't have to be semantic. It's like literally every time I change anything I'll do a release. So I should be able to do that, I would have thought. Bug fixes and performance improvements. Thank you, Danny. That's exactly what it needs to say. <laughs> That's what all of my things will say. Um,
So. Yeah. I think I should be able to pull those in automatically. That wouldn't be too hard, would it? Optionally, the release tag may also have an urgency property having one of the following values. Low, medium, high, or critical. But that's optional, so I don't care. Um, timestamp properties mainly using generated distro metadata. Timestamp takes place since over date. She can have properties, version, date, and timestamp. At least day level granularity is required. The release time informed of a Unix epoch. This tag should. Uh, so I can't use it. I can't use an epoch time. Um, and calling, uh, Popey says, according to my data, the number of flag application flags has grown by 288 between September 2021 and now. That's on average 1.3 new applications per day. Okay, I mean, this is why they're prepared to go the process for releasing is you check out the repository with literally all the apps, metadata in it, add yours, and then send a pull request. <laughs> um, I mean, good luck doing that with, you know, the Google Play Store, but I'm sure when 10,000 applications come along, they'll build a different system. Anyway, uh, so I need to write out release XML... Stable will be fine. A description tag. A URL tag. Detail release tag. Explain the change made in this particular release. Issue tag. Yeah, I'm not doing any of that. Um, the question is, are they going to get super cross if I auto build this? Because what it's meant... To, the, the core issue here is... This is meant to be easy because I'm meant to be collecting together changes into a release and then I do a release on GitHub where I make a tag and then I make that um, like a new release number and I write release notes for it. And I just don't do any of that. Right? So because I don't do any of that and this assumes that I do do it, this is going to be extremely irritating. Um... So I feel like if I auto build it, if I write the world's noddiest Python script, which just or bash script probably actually because I'm just WinPress now, um, which just passes my Git log and writes out XML, then I will obviously be the worst. And I feel like the people who want me to do it properly will feel like I'm doing an end run around the system because I am. But equally. I'm not going to start doing I care about release numbers and I'm going to cut a new release for this thing. Because what that's actually going to mean is if you have anything, any kind of a bug fix which isn't really big or really critical, I'm just not going to do a release for it. I'm going to go, oh, I can't be bothered to do a release. So it's just there in main, at the head of main, and it never actually makes it into a release. And then everyone gets all snotty about it. So... I think I'm going to auto-generate releases from the Git log. Yes. I'm not doing a release artifact. You just get it out of Git. Uh, latest to oldest order. Yep. Am I supposed to have one for literally every release I've ever done? The algorithm used for comparing version version comparison algorithm. Non digits are sorted lexically first. What? For meaningful version numbers, because they're following semantic versioning. No. <laughs> Don't use epochs. Um, comparison, comparison of ASCII value. The initial part of each string consists entirely of non-digit characters determined. See, I think I want my version numbers to be something like... 
I don't want a version number to be something like, uh, what's the date today? Uh, uh, something like uh, dot uh, time is, oh god it's, wow, midnight really? How long have I been doing this? Oh my god, four and a half hours. Um, well, okay. Um, so, like, 120103 dot, and then the short git commit ID, which would be that, so it could be tracked back to a git thing. That's what I think I want the version number to be. Because that way, it's unique. Uh, it's traceable back to an individual thing, and they sort lexicographically in order. It means that I can't release things that aren't in Git, but that's fine. Neil says, call it version 0.1, this is learning for God's sake. I mean, I could do that, but I'm reasonably confident that if I call it 0.1 and then I do another release, which is also 0.1, a bunch of stuff will go, but that's not a new release, so we're not going to upgrade people. That's the issue. If I could just, if you know, if I could just go, you need a release name, and I'll just go, fine, all the releases are called Beverly, and that's it, and I never set anything else, then great. But I'm reasonably confident that something somewhere will go, you didn't increase the version number, and therefore, sucks to be you, we didn't upgrade anyone because they've already got that version. So I'm going to have to increase it every go. And if I have to increase it every go manually, I'll just be sad. So, and because I have my build script, I can just do this. So that makes sense. Yeah, Neil, when you say 0.1.1, yeah, yeah, cool. But then I've got to do that manually. And I don't want to do it manually. Whereas I, I will put things into Git. So if I build something which just makes up version number, I'm sure I could make up version numbers like this, which are 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, whatever. But then they're meaningless. I mean, if I'm going to have a program make them up anyway, I might as well make them meaningful version numbers, right? This is a perfectly legitimate version number. <laughs> People don't like it, they bite me. Um... Also, that would be oh, oh because it's midnight. Um, yeah, so the question is, how would I do that? Because this file gets seeded by the build script. By this, but if I'm gonna write a bunch of magic git log passing stuff into it, that's not gonna work. So what I'm probably gonna have to do is change this so it runs a little Python script. And the little Python script reads this and the git log and writes it out. The issue is the little Python script can't read the git log. Because it has to run at FlatHub, where it probably doesn't have access to the git log. Or the git command. Or does it? I mean, it checks it out. Are they going to think that's Larry? It sounds like a job for Midnight MR Macker. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> See, really, what I should do is every time I write it, I do a git commit, I should also update the releases file. I don't really want to pull in the git log at flat pack build time. I want to have 
I, I want to put the releases into here at git commit time. But I won't remember to do that. I could write a git commit hook. Everyone's going to be like, language, you're a crazy person. Why don't you just remember to update it? And the answer is, because I won't. I mean, I like your idea, but I just won't. Because I don't even run this. No, I run that. This is just so I can test it. Maybe I'll do it in here. No, can't do it in here because at the point at which I'm running it to test it, I don't have a git commit message for these things because I haven't committed it because I'm still testing it. Neil says I can do it with a git hook. Yeah, I can. I can write a git commit hook where when I try to commit something, it goes, you haven't you haven't committed a change to the releases list in updater.xml. Go away and do that. At which point I'd go, sigh, okay. <laughs> now, also, new Wii's. Don't I have a version number in here somewhere? Yeah, version 1.51. Which I haven't changed. Forever. I don't think. <laughs> when did I last change that? Uh, pick. I could probably work this out. Uh, version 1.51. Git blame. Can I git blame this line into the past? Bump the version number slightly. Two years ago. Well done, Stuart. View blame prior to this change. Well done, git hub, by the way. You, you know I admit... Yeah, shut up. Um... Here's my version number. Update pick executable to use the new named icons six years ago. <laughs> Feel the blame prior to this change. <laughs> 1.4. Brown paper bag bug in the font size. Wow. So I haven't touched the version number for six years. Um, just use make file everything. No. A GitHub action which runs on a commit and ninjas the file. Oh, a GitHub action. Ooh. The question, uh, the reason I don't think I should do a GitHub action is because then I think Snapcraft will build it twice. I'm going to turn into a pumpkin, Popey says. And to be honest with you, it's midnight. I should probably stop. <laughs> right? Thank you, Popey, um, for coming along and uh, having a chat to me. I appreciate the, the help and the advice and everything. Um, and, yeah, this means I have to think about this versioning thing and everything. Um, so, we made some progress here. I, I am able to build a flat pack from PEG. I'm not going to get it published to um, Flat Hub tonight because I need to work out how to do this versioning uh, releases thing and how much I care about it and so on. So I need to do that first, and then once I've done that, I can uh, write the metadata stuff for FlatHub and get it published there. But we have made a lot of progress this evening, so this is cool. I don't know when I'm going to get a chance to do this again, but hopefully you enjoy... Poby says, who cares if Snapcraft builds it twice? I mean, it's... <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, <laughs> but it seems churlish, you know, to do so. Um, I, I understand... Why you say this? Um, but, um, Neil says off to bed too. Lovely chat. Thanks for the stream. Yeah, uh, this was fun. I quite enjoyed this. Um, so maybe I'll do this again sometime. Um, let me know if you'd like me to. You know, I don't know. I'm supposed to go like and subscribe. <laughs> no, no, but for God's sake, don't just don't do any of that, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, I posted it on Mastodon and on Twitter. So um, if you're interested, uh, give me a shout. And uh, I'll probably do this again, and um, once I've got this done and released, I'll probably write a blog post or something about it, um, advising people. I've also got this big list of notes I need to go through. Um, but yeah, this has been a really useful little 
test of how to do streaming and how to make OBS work and everything. So thank you all. Um, it is now uh, 10 past 12 on Wednesday evening.